gates open, they're off the mares, missed the start by four lengths. In a sensation, Winks is last and Ecuador's going to lead comfortably. Harper's Choice away wide. Then came Antonio Giuseppe from Allergy. And Bowman's put himself in a position where he can start to creep a bit closer on Winks. She's still last as they go past the 800 metres. Ecuador on top, the pacemaker by a length and a half to Harper's Choice. Fox play well positioned. Then Red Excitement, Inference, Antonio Giuseppe, Allergy. And Winks, she's still back last as they go past the 500 metres. Ecuador coming off the fence, giving Fox play a bit of room. Then Harper choice red excitement winks gets to the outside six or seven off the lead fox play the stable mate to winks makes the run on the fence goes up to join ecuador red excitement winks has four lengths away she's cutting loose now fox play into the front from ecuador winks is down the outside it's going to get desperate winks is going to fox play winks dies yes she got up Winks got up to beat Fox Play. There's 18 in a row, but what about the drama today? Ecuador stable mate to Winks, makes the run on the fence, goes up to join Ecuador. Red excitement. Winks has four lengths away. She's cutting loose now. Fox Play into the front from Ecuador. Winks is down the outside. It's going to get desperate. Winks is going to Fox Play. Winks dies. Yes, she got up. Winks got up to beat Fox Play. There's 18 in a row, but what about the drama today? Ecuador third, then Red... She couldn't win today. Everyone around us, I could hear the whispers, she can't win, she's gone. Don't write off a champion. Just pressed that button at the wrong time, and she was in trouble there for a, a long way of that race, but champions overcome problems like that, and that was a show... It has to be mathematically impossible for this to happen. But it did. Now, the champions can get out of a situation, and Winx is an absolute champion. Well, have a look at the sectional. It was just incredible. It, she's just a champion, and as Huey said, it was mathematics. And comes home in 10.7. She's broke 11 for the last 200 metres over the last 600 metres. You don't see horses finish off like that as a rule. Um, it's, there, there they are there. They're the splits. You'll never see splits like that. Yeah, Vince Accardi, uh, it, it was amazing. If it, it, you couldn't believe it would happen to her, but the chip broke in a saddle cloth, uh, which is associated with the GPS timing for long terms. Something in the barriers must well, have... What about when she, she was shuffling around there yeah. at the start? When she was... Yeah, the racing, the racing purists, the guys that you know, live and breathe by the times and things like that, they are all in amazement at what she'd done. So it's obviously something very special. Let's have a look at the start. Ajax and, and Winx. So, and Ajax at um, start 19 was beaten at 40 to 1 on. Uh, Desert Gun today, a Winxless PB Lawrence, and Hartnell was able to strut his stuff. Now, there is a... An amazing story to this race, but we'll talk about the win first of all. Yeah, always in control, dominant, dominant, dominant win. I mean, the, actually, the price was luxurious considering his form and his fresh form, and he just treated his rivals with contempt here. He was, he was, he was really good. Givedor was good. Blackheart Bartlett pulled up slightly lame, but he just stalked that hot speed, and he was never in doubt there. Now, I'll set up the story. See what happens and go from there. All right, but we what, we know what. Well, I'm going to go with Happy Clapper. I, look, I know he's not completely wound up. He's Gem and Tom Melbourne. Ecuador's being cuddled by the market to three dollars. It's open, they're off and racing. Invincible Gem got it off to a great start, so did Ecuador as usual. The Virginian quickly into stride goes to third and happy clapper improving. Followed by last one, 450 out. Ecuador in front of the tramway by length on the Virginian. Invincible Gem's looking to come off the fence, not getting much room, and Tom Melbourne makes the run. Tom Melbourne lays it down to Ecuador. Invincible Gem still trying to get clear. Happy clapper winds up. Tom Melbourne hits the front. Happy clapper the outside, running on stoutly. Tom Melbourne, happy clapper the outside. Happy clapper takes the lead in the tramway. Happy clapper, too good for Tom Melbourne. Invincible gem third, just in front of Ecuador. Further back to heavens above and Mac. Well, it was a reward from Pat Webster, the ride for Josh Adams, and he hasn't let him down. What a... What a horse he is, happy clapper. He's a crowd favourite. He's won eight from 26... Before today, he'd won 2.2 million 
He's in for a great prep. Tom Melbourne. That and look, he'll go to the Epsom, and I know uh, Pat's very nervous about the weight that he's going to get in the Epsom, and he's he's pleading for leniency, um, like a jockey about to be suspended. So. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? You know, look, a champion. Um, we're all, you know, ex expectations high with us today. Obviously, deservedly so, and let's hope she gets the job done. Done the, the calculation, so 93.6% of the hold with tab fixed odds is for weeks. She did touch a dollar ten brief. He goes for 19 straight. The group two Chelmsford stakes over the famous Royal Randwick Miles. Then came for the back to lifeless, ordinary Lasquetti Spirit and Allergics. Last of all, Josh Parr ensuring a very strong tempo here on Red Excitement. Gets the best part of six in front of Shikante at Harper's Choice. Now Winks is starting to get into her work, going into a clear fourth. A sense of occasion under pressure. Then came Antonio Giuseppe. Lifeless, ordinary and Saracen trying to pick up and around the turn. Red excitement. He's certainly making it exciting. Par sitting pretty quietly. Six lengths clear. Now Winks is getting cracking. Further back to Antonio Giuseppe. Chicante still there. Red excitement. Five in front. Now Winks has only got one more to pick off. Red excitement. Three in front. Winks is coming. Red excitement. But here she comes. Right over the top. Winks. Barnstorm finish again 19 in a row Winks beats Red Excitement and pass sitting pretty quietly six lengths clear now Winks is getting cracking further back to Antonio Giuseppe Chicante still there Red Excitement five in front now Winks has only got one more to pick off Red Excitement three in front Winks is coming Red Excitement but here she comes right over the top Winks barnstorming finish again 19 in a row Winks beats Red Excitement and Chicante Cade third, then Antonio Giuseppe, lifeless order. I wasn't worried last start, but today I really was. And what she, uh, what she did that today is just incredible. I mean, everything she does is incredible, but I just can't. I'm lost for words. I really am. What is that feeling? With 400 to run, I thought um, I was more concerned today than I was first up. I thought she was going to get there quite easy first up with her momentum, but sort of hard to gauge when you've got a horse free rolling like that, has a had a soft section, because you've got to give credit to the second horse. You know, they were all jacked up, you know, he was, she was moving into the race within two or three lengths of them. Yeah. She's getting out and chasing now a long way from home. We saw the first up uh, win where she came home 55-1, her last thousand. I mean, the Ramwick track record's 55-7, mm. and then there she is coming home 33-1, and eased up late. Um, there's no knock. She's as good as she's ever gone. Yeah, she's a champion, but the reel's just going to be, you know, you go through all those wins. It's just not you know, regimental wins where she's yeah. just too good for them. It's the way she gets out of trouble, you know, on more than five or six occasions. It is. Through that winning streak, she's a, an absolute champion. We all know that. Which we're, we're running out of words for her. Um, Tap her anyway. Yeah, that's right. But uh, uh, just the surge from here on in, and then the sectional times don't lie, 10.8 uh, the last 200 metres after a, a solid run race record time is uh, quite astounding. Uh, look, Full credit to Josh Parr and the tactics on Red Excitement. Chicante, well, he chased him all. Also on the drift. So uh, not a lot of support or push to uh, tip you into any runners here. So we've got Merchant Navy favourite, 340. Uh... Then Merchant Navy, Murahib, and Evil Cry at the tail of the field around the turn. 450 metres to go. It's Kobayashi, two lengths, plover set. Trekking the inside, just needs a little bit of luck. Then came Booker, the outside. Poseidon's pull runs up behind them. So too, Murahib, King's Authority. Merchant Navy to the outside is running on now Booker takes the lead at the 200 Merchant Navy on the outside is chasing the filly, it's Booker about a neck in front but Merchant Navy's putting in the big ones, Merchant Navy took the front from Booker, Merchant Navy just in front and scored from Booker, thirds of photo tricking on Laura Hib, followed by Hualale, next King's Authority, followed Merchant Navy at 3.20 and 1.40 for Mark Zara Give the man a pogo stick, he'd win on that as well. It is an outstanding field of 11 runners for the $1 million New Zealand Bloodstock Memsey Stakes at Group 1 level. Jane, who have you settled on as the pick of the yard? Support for Blackheart Bar that got into 480. It's back out to $6 now. Hey, Doc hasn't budged. Days and two lengths to see Burge. 600 metres to go. It's Vega Magic in front by a neck. Two on the outside, Jon Snow. A length and a half away, Blackheart Bar who peels out three deep now. Hey, Doc behind them, healed up from Lure Remain. Followed by Toes and Stardom as they come to the corner. 300 to go. 
Vega Magic lets down. Two lengths in front of Blackheart Bart. Haydock into the clear. Followed by Toes and Stardom back to the inside from Lure Remain. But Vega Magic goes for home at the 150. Still two lengths in front of Blackheart Bart. Vega Magic going well. And Vega Magic win 12 and it's a big one. Second, Blackheart Bart from Toes and Stardom. Fourth, a photo Haydock or Lure Remain. Followed next in... This horse is the star, Vega Magic. Craig Williams has led all of the way. No speed early with Charmed Harmony taken out. So point on. There's $10 million up there, isn't there? That, that, look, it'd be a logical one for the, you know, the Rupert Clark, maybe, or, or the Everest, and I'm thinking the Everest. Congratulations. They were non-competitive. They had no chance. How do you summarise their performance? Uh, Benny, pretty quickly, is some of the splits from those back in the field, like Humidoy broke 11 seconds, four to the two, and he went through the line nice. He's looking for further now, obviously, and... Um... <laughs>is the run to the rose the big lead up to the golden rose group one gun sun coming to the turn 500 out parast in front the two favorites giving chase minari and pariah kemantari's five lengths away into the straight parast lead from minari and pariah to the outside parast being joined now by minari minari drawing level pariah's a length away but minari starting to edge clear inside the 150 pariah sticks on gamely kemantari late but Spectacular cult this. Madari goes on to win it from Pariah in second. Photo third, Parast and Kemantari. Uh, Shogun Sun has hit the outside the track record. This big brute three-year-old by Schnitzel Manari has won the run to the rose and confirms favouritism for the gold. Um, but this horse in the autumn, what he showed us before he raced, so I thought he, this is a fair and continuing horse, you know. What about the Golden Rose now? Do you go to 1,400? Yes, you'll go to 1,400. Group 1 plus. Yeah, I'd suggest this is a good form race and these are some pretty good horses. Uh, he's the benchmark three-year-old for mine in the country at the moment. Uh, Minari, I think he deserves his place as favourite for the Golden Rose. The turn of foot that he showed yesterday on a, on a hot speed, it was going to take a some, type, some type, of type of horse to, to run him down. Let's hear the call. Day. $2.60 now, Minari, and uh, Pariah, who was second to him at $6. So we are in for some ride, if that's the case. Oh, well, let's have a look at all the runners here for the Colgate Optic White Stake, 1600, Group 1. Mounting out from the he was, he was terrific first up. He's usually better second up, and he appears to return. This is why uh, she hasn't put a, a margin in the opposition so far, this preparation. I'm not sold on barrier one, but Bowman knows what he's got there. And, and the thing with her is that she's so nimble, so even if she is presented a difficult situation, even win this win. Toe when she was going around in that pre-parade ring, but once she got in here, she did and a happy clapper. Three lengths to the champion. Winx has got two behind her. Heavens above and McCreary as they stroll along the side section of the course. 800 metres to run. Red excitement. Two lengths clear from McIntosh and Ecuador. Two and a half further back to Fox Play. Similar margin then to happy clapper. Winx is still two. Three further back behind happy clapper. Boy, she's giving away a big start. Then heavens above and McCreary's last of all. Par really starting to up the ante. Coming around the turn on Red excitement. Boy, Winks is still third last. Red Excitement swings in front of McIntosh. Here comes Happy Clapper and Fox Play. And now the champ gets going down the outside. Red Excitement being tackled by Happy Clapper. But Winks is charming in. Here we go again. Winks from right out the back. Powers away from Happy Clapper and Fox Play. And the champ makes it 20 in a row. Winks goes on a winner from Happy Clapper. Fox Play a distant third. Followed then by McIntosh. Red excitement being tackled by Happy Clapper, but Winx is charming and here we go again. Winx from right out the back, powers away from Happy Clapper and Fox Play, and the champ makes it 20 in a row. Winx goes on a winner from Happy Clapper, Fox Play a distant third, followed then by McIntyre.
Josh McCreary is niggling at her more than usual. It wasn't. It's not like her. At the thousand, he was niggling, and usually you, you sneeze on her, and she's on their heels, ready to pounce on the point of the turn. But at the thousand, she was flat out going nowhere. I suppose 133.6 makes. I thought, oh no, today's the day she's going to get beat. What did you did, think, Nick? Oh, I've been watching her. Yeah. Uh, it was probably a rational having a, a look at the the way the race was broken down, the sectionals afterwards, and how good she's actually gone. It suggests she's going as well as ever. But during the race, watching it live and having Huey niggling for her for so far out, it was probably the most I've ever been worried I've ever been watching her. Well, at this point of the last start, and you can see the effect of where the leaders have really caved in. Oh, they've run 133 here for the 1,600 metres. It's the fastest 1,600 metre race she's recorded, win she's recorded. Anyone who thinks that this mare's not going as good as ever is dead set dreaming. <laughs> Benny hit the nail on the head. The sectionals tell the story. They've absolutely flown her. She is uh, one special horse. Um, I think I think Vince Cardi, I read this morning, won 7.6 the last 1,200 metres, around that anyway. Um, but she... Niggles. No, he, I think it was more than a niggle this time. He, he really said, come on, come on, I want the old wings to just be in touch on the point of the turn and have them covered. Uh, it wasn't so easy. She, she had to really run time that last 1,200 metres. And... Um, Ooh, 20 now. 19 before yesterday, 20. Uh, as of this morning, and she still hasn't reached the great picnic in the park. Now, interesting story, Max, Max Presnell wrote this in the Sydney Morning Herald yesterday. He spoke to Greg Carpenter about a weight that she might have got had she nominated for the Melbourne Cup this year. And Greg Carpenter admitted she would have got 64 and a half. Wow. Wow. Now, Maccabi Diva in a third Melbourne Cup got 58 and a half, didn't she? Yeah. Yeah. In a third, after, after she won two. Yes. In a Cox Plate. 64 and a half he would have given her had she been nominated. Well, we could run her in the Caulfield Cup. She wouldn't get a penalty. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Relative to the days and uh, chased a, a really strong speed. Uh, this day was impressive. There's been eight winners from the three races. This horse is contested as well. Uh, you can see Anchor Bid there running on down the outside. Um, you know, another well sprint filly who subsequently won a couple of times. But Royal Symphony was dominant. And to the eye, uh, watch the way he really accelerates away. Uh, the riders pretty soft on him late um, but it doesn't stop him powering through the line and uh, an outstanding win he's trialled well for the return and obviously uh, the one they all have to beat on what was 20 now into on what was 20 now into 205 Victorian official price how does the unbeaten son of doomsday look well he looks terrific he's got a bit of a way about him this horse just uh, his attitude on race day the way of Cliff's Edge uh, number five in fact a bit of a spec here 26 into seven sets and there are three deep cliffs edge has its back at the moment from a clear sunshine lone eagle on the rails then mighty boss Seb Fai Uyang Feng Royal Symphony has about three behind him as they straighten showtime at the 400 metres with Metz and Murahib behind them Hualalei on the outside then Garrard Royal Symphony's back on the rails and trying to get through but it's showtime at the 250 from Hualalei down the outside Seb Fire is rocketing home with cliffs edge a clear sunshine up to showtime at the 100 metres now Royal Symphony is getting through. Is it too late? A clear sunshine in front, but Royal Symphony over the top. Big win! Big win! Royal Symphony from a clear sunshine set fire and home late. Then showtime, mighty boss, Cliff's Edge, one at $1.90 and $1.20. Well, it gave us a scare. It was back on the rails, and at once peeled his way through the field. And uh, and the way he picked up late was uh, things that special horses do. When the bell goes, awful trouble, an unwinnable position. Unwinnable. He's uh, he got he's very tight early in the race. I think there was a, a, a few, uh, as Dwayne said, a few blokes playing jockeys in the race against him there, and, and to just pick himself off the canvas here. Wow, he, the raps are, are proven. Correct. Correct there. He's got Caulfield Guineas written all over him. Uh, yeah, look, there was a good... He did. Yeah. A little bit outside the square here. and I've had... Plenty of opinions here ahead of the Bobby Lewis. Uh, we might be able to get a little bit of... Justice, uh, now $4.80, which is... Uh, well, $4.20... Uh, sorry, $4.80, uh, which is a very good push, given it was $8.50 earlier today. So...
Sweaty, who is second last, and at the end is Lucky Hustler. So with 450 metres to go, it's Red Kirk Warrior held together from Saracino a length away as they quicken. Then Japanisma. Next in the field is Attention. Voodoo Lad looks to run on. And then Sosie Bon, who's held up. Red Kirk Warrior at the 200 metres has extended the lead to three legs. Scales of Justice down the outside, but it's all over the place from Voodoo Lad. But it's all Red Kirk Warrior loves the Flemington 1200 and won it by over two scales of justice. Land of plenty up for third from Voodoo Lad Attention. Then came Sosie Bon Lucky Hustler. Red Kirk Warrior has destroyed them. Well, it was a real history maker. Interesting that David Hayes has two runners there ready to go. The star has first refusal on this horse, Red Kirk Warrior, or Vega Magic. Which way do you go? Oh, well, it's 50-50, uh, I'd say. He was, uh, look, at the anticipation was, and the confidence was all about him yesterday, and they were proven correct, and uh, that's similar to what he did first up in the Newmarket last preparation, uh, before it's been tried to stretch out to the Epsom. Uh, yeah, look, that's that's very encouraging. Um, he's Both right. were fine. Well, I'm well because, you know, he's a good... Happy Diva Steaks, sponsored by PFD Food Services. Jane, who was the pick of the yard? Well, I don't normally go for them when they're as short as Hartnell, but I am going to put him on top as the pick of the yard. Uh, he looks... Feature event. Rag at punters from Hartnell, and they're absolutely charged into him. Uh, $1.85 now into $1.70. He did touch $1.65. It's all about him. Hey, Doc. Still. Second last to have a go and Humidor is last. Haydock at the 850 by a half length to Hartnell. A length and a half away third is Le Remain. Blackheart Bart around it now. Galo Chopper's right behind those horses from Single Gaze and Jon Snow. A length to have a go followed by Seaburge, Ventura Storm, Humidor and at the end of the field is Inference. They come around the turn. Haydock just in front of Hartnell. Le Remain three deep. Blackheart Bart four deep about to sprint up. Seaburge, Galo Chop behind them, Jon Snow down the outside, single gaze and humidors presenting as well. Hartnell at the 300 metres moves up and takes Haydock, followed by Blackheart Bart and Humidor is launching. Hartnell below the 200, Humidor's a real threat. Hartnell joined and headed by Humidor. Humidor with a powerful run, sprints away. Oh, what a big spring coming up for Humidor, bolts in. Hartnell second, third Blackheart Bart, four Galo Chop from single Gaze, Tabago, John. Humidor, Damien Lane having a big day. 1370 and 280. Number after his win in the Australian Cup, but uh, to do that today, uh, it, was, it was devastating, wasn't it? And uh, well, all the good judges were saying how how well he was going, and this this proved that he's uh, he's got Caulfield Cup written all over him, hasn't he? The Hartnell, I would have thought, had a soft enough time of it up front to the eye. I haven't dissected the times; they looked to be just casually going through the motions there. So I was surprised something come from the back. Oh, just right down that horse, Ventura Storm, as far as the cups are concerned. Concerned as well, but that's a slashing Caulfield Cup trial. Very good. Vin. 70, our man, and just getting out of faction again after having some support. Hans Holbein, uh, he's into five dollars fifty. Charlevoix then came on the outside aloft as they come up towards the corner at the 750 metre marker. Almanda next the inside from Kalani Kid. Bondi Beach is getting going. Then Loresho, Yogi, Super Hayes, and Swarka Dalek. 600 metres to go. Grand Duke of Tuscany three lengths. Kiss Montaigne followed by Hans Holbein. Crocodile Rock is presenting to the middle of the track followed by a lot Kalani Kid. Next, El Mand on the inside, followed by Super Hayes, Yogi and Kalani Kid down the centre. Charles of War and El Mandon right up on the inside. And it's Oliver and El Mandon scraping the paint at the 250, drives away. Three lengths, Crocodile Rock, followed by a loft and Yogi Kalani Kid. Oh, but Oliver looks behind the right shoulder. Keep going, son, you're four lengths in front. El Mandon's going to absolutely trot him. Last year's Melbourne Cup winner, How is Impressive is that. He's down two and a half lengths. Wow. Second crocodile. Ogie and Kalani kid down the centre. Charles of War and El Mandon right up on the inside. And it's Oliver and El Mandon scraping the paint at the 250. Drives away. Three lengths crocodile rock followed by a loft and Yogi Kalani kid. Oh, but Oliver looks behind the right shoulder. Keep going, son. You're four lengths in front. El Mandon's going to absolutely trot in. Last year's Melbourne Cup winner. How impressive is that? That ease down two and a half lengths. Wow. Second crocodile rock from a loft. Yogi Grand. That was devastating.
Al Mandon, 5.30 and $2. He just kept looking behind the right shoulder and saw nothing coming. Al Mandon has trotted in the JRA trophy. But, uh, gee, Damon, you've been so many winners. Even you must be impressed with that. That was extraordinary, Dino. It's been a long time since I've ridden a stayer where I've had my feet on the dashboard so far from home. Uh, that was really exciting. Uh, he's uh, certainly come back better than ever, this horse. He put surprised me, I'd have to say, Shane, the way he just cruised, cruised past them at uh, 61 kilos. It's a pretty, uh, pretty good effort, isn't it? Uh, he's obviously... We're in here full fitness yet. He looked terrific, but what he's done here is just extraordinary. Well, uh, 40 minutes earlier, I was willing to uh, head to a tote window and have a little crack at Ventura Storm for the Melbourne Cup until I uh, called this race and to have a look at Ollie just scraping the paint up on the fence. And uh, have you seen an easier win? It was, I mean, I thought the win uh, of this horse in the Bard Cummings 12 months ago was easy, but this was easier. And this horse has come back in uh, extraordinary order. And what a stayer he is. And uh, I mean, that horse could have won by eight lengths today. And Oliver's just uh, kidding with them. What a, what a win. It's made a horse like Crocodile Rock who many were touting as the Melbourne Cup horse uh, a couple of months ago, makes Crocodile Rock look a uh, second rater. And so, oh, I know he got all the brakes in the run and the speed was on and everything went uh, perfect for him. 61 kilos. Uh, let's face it, this horse has had five runs at 2,200 plus uh, now uh, in Australia and he's, and he's bolted in a lot of them. He, he is one, one serious, serious race horse. He's, uh, uh, I can't wait to you know, see how he progresses into the, uh, the Cup again. Well, we're set. Sure, a storm. Let it ride this year. Oliver or Mavavoy? Yeah, did they fancy? He wasn't the most fancied one no, out of his. To Rose Hill Gardens. Race number seven is the Devortley Wines Golden Rose, 1,400 metres, a million dollars in prize money. And in the Golden Rose, three lengths away, two for Melody. Pa's got the favourite, Minari in fourth on the outside of Gold Standard, then Trapeze Artist. Two off two, Dracaris from Diamond Tathagata. Further back to Parara on the outside of Merchant Navy. Then came Chauffeur assimilates out deep from Shogun Sun and Champagne Cuddles the last one, they've gone hard in this it's the Mission and Paras turning together from Gold Standard giving chase then for Melody Minari and Trapeze Artist running down the outside Paras takes the lead at the 300 metres Trapeze Artist, Minari get going with Gold Standard, it's Trapeze Artist a half length clear from Minari and then came Gold Standard Trapeze Artist down to the 100 he's starting to extend away here's a big win in the Golden Road for a trapeze artist in Thai England. What a win. Second goes to Champagne Cuddles. Photo third, Gold Standard and Minari. Then came Assimilate from Parast. Further back to... Group 1, Golden Rose at $42.30 and nine twenty. Here's the photo for the miners. One into 41. Uh, he, won, he wins like a, an even money chance there. Uh, he was back up there. Uh, she was terrific. And uh, Assimilate, well, nothing much went right for him. But look at the dominance in that performance to, to put more than four lengths in what we thought was a well I'm, I'm convinced it was a really good field uh, it, it, obviously this horse just the blinkers are the key to him Lizzie yeah the, the pair what we've been inundated with she will reign and is clearly our worst result at Sportsbet. Let's rip into the market. $3.10, Russian Revolution. He's got his supporters. Side of it from Darren Vidora well back. She will reigns third, last and ridden along. Two lengths further back is Malaguira, last of all, Voodoo Lad. Shy Dell for the champion himself, Joe Marrera. About a neck in front. Our boy Hugh Bayman on Russian Revolution eyeballs him. One back Jungle Edge, Rock Magic, Fadan the rail. Sweet Sherry well back then Darren. She will reign will need to pull out a brilliant performance coming the deepest on the bend. Jay dropped them. Shidel's got two in front. Rock Magic's running on. Rock Magic after Shidel. Rock Magic drawing up. Shidel in front. No run far enough. She will reign. She will reign. Flying through the door. Fedora from nowhere and she will reign in a great finish to the Moya. Third is between Shy Dell, Voodoo Lad and Rock Magic. Rock Magic's running on. Rock Magic after Shy Dell. Rock Magic drawing up. Shy Dell in front. No run far enough. She will reign. She will reign. Flying through Vidora. Vidora from nowhere and she will reign in a great finish to the Moya. Third is between Shy Dell, Voodoo Lad and Rock Magic. Moments, what a filly. What a great ride by McAvoy to lift it from the jaws of defeat. Fedora has flashed out a late.
Let him turn. Uh, she wasn't going to win. She couldn't win. She will reign. No, it was an amazing performance. I took my eyes off her when she, you know, was out there going nowhere under the under pressure, and um, I was looking elsewhere. And uh, to think that first run, Mooney Valley against sharp, sharp sprinters. I know they went warp speed up front, uh, but she was sensational. I thought Vidora was going to get the money there, but she she lifted this filly, and that's. Uh, I know it's only thousand metre form, and you can make cases for other horses from the T rows that had no luck at all in one more honey. Blake Shin would have had a, a good understanding of this filly now and I think she'll really benefit by the longer trip of the mile. So you see, he's going to need a bit of luck from that wider draw and Pandemonium looks set to lead for a long way back. They might often go to the uh, Thousand Guineas straight away and uh, ultimately end up at the VRC Oaks. Yeah, you mentioned some... And in them a sweet deal, Pandemonium's under the pump. Now Cellar Girl gets cracking, followed by one more honey to the outside. And now Champagne Cuddles is starting to work through the field. She's just going to need a bit of room. They come up the rise and Sweet Deal moves up to Lover Lover. Cellar Girl is sprinting quickly, so Champagne Cuddles and Smooth landing up the fence. Elise gets the run as well. The two favourites, Elise went straight past Champagne Cuddles, then Cellar Girl and one more honey. Hasn't she got a motor, Elise? That was electrifying. Elise wins it comfortably in the flight stakes from Champagne Cuddle. Cellar Girl third, just in front of one more honey. Then smooth landing from uh, starting to work through the field. She's just going to need a bit of room. They come up the rise and Sweet Deal moves up to Lover Lover. Cellar Girl is spreading quickly, so Champagne Cuddles. And smooth landing up the fence. Elise gets the run as well. The two favourites, Elise, went straight past Champagne Cuddles. Then Cellar Girl and one more honey. Hasn't she got a motor, Elise? That was electrifying. Elise wins it comfortably in the flight stakes from Champagne Cuddle. Cellar Girl third, just in front of one more honey. Then smooth landing from... Elise, uh, what an exciting filly and what a dash of speed today. And... Two and a quarter each way. Two and a quarter by two and a quarter. They're in... Although she's come round now and she's learned how to race and he rides her so well. And, you know, she, she, she burst through the line breaking 11 seconds. So... She's she's a serious filly now that she's, she's proven herself at a mile. Great ride, great ride on the second horse as well. She's just the bride. What did he ask things either, uh, Greg? Yeah, big watch on Chitaka. It was one of the best sevens you'll ever see in the shorts. The amount of ground he made up, it was trademark style. It just showed that he's back as good as ever, and I'm sure that he'll warrant his favouritism in the Everest following this race today. In her. Going overly hard here from takedown and fell sweet caught without cover. In her time, pinching ground on the fence on the inside of Kuro. Nieta's three deep. Further back to clearly innocent pumpkin pie Moa. Two further back to English. And Abdullah really starting to get stuck into Ch at Chautauqua. He's shown at the stick at the top of the straight. And into the straight now. And ball of muscle up the rise in front. In her time, slotting off the inside from takedown. Nieta's running on well. Chautauqua can't win today. In her time, takes the lead from Ball of Muscle. Here's English. She's cutting loose on the outside. In her time in front, English is charging at her. In her time, clings on. In her time. Well, in her time, she's off to the Everest now. Just held on to beat English. Third between clearly innocent and Chautauqua. The ground he's made up today has been incredible. Then take down In her, her time, has won the premiere, and in doing so, has she booked her ticket to the... For young trainer Ben Smith, a late decision to put the bar plates on. She's won with them now on two occasions. Um, she could have easily been unbeaten and be a Stradbroke and a Tiara winner over the, over the, uh, the winter. I love her desire. She wants to win. You think, oh, she's got nothing left, and then she gets challenged, and I've seen it on a number of occasion, occasions where she's fought, 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 and really lifted off. Not that she was ever on the canvas there, but uh, she was terrific. She's, she's a winner, and now that she's broken back... million dollars up for grabs here in the tab. Epsom handicap over the famous Ramwick Mile. Group one, race number seven. Before we look at them in the yard... He's back. I think coming through, he's been holding his form really well this... He's returned in fantastic form. He loves the track and distance. He's third up, form stacks up. He, uh, look, he appears to... So very much uh, in the pink. He'd be hard to roll today, I'd say. Happy Clapper, our top selection. One Fox plays, they turn. Red excitement in front. Happy Clapper's had a great run all the way, giving chase. Then coming through down the outside, snitzing up the fence. Further back to sound proposition. Tom Melbourne slicing through. 
Clapper. Shen makes the move on Happy Clapper at the furlong. Happy Clapper takes the lead in the F7. Tom Melvin's darting up the inside. Happy Clapper a length in front. Tom's running on well, but Happy Clapper hanging on in the F7. Happy Clapper, he wins his group one today. Happy Clapper beats Tom Melvin. Photo for third, Snitson and Fox play. Then sound proposition. There won't Happy be, Clapper. there won't be a more popular Epsom victory than Happy Clappers here today. A very, very pelled by Ike's dream. And uh, that's the fastest Epsom ever run. Falonde held that at 133.31. It's a group one Epsom at Ramey, and I, I, I was never, ever confident until uh, I seen Tom Melbourne come along the inside. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. Ronnie said to me, you know, <laughs> don't, you know don't worry about it. <laughs> so you were? I'm always worried. Since, since, since I seen him, and I thought it was great to the track for the Underwood Stakes and it looks like the money is starting to swing. The racing, uh, special touched on it, uh, looks like a sit and steer job but uh, same of RA, you just got to stay with it because the money uh, has certainly gone on and $11 is what you'll get so outside hope. Hard to pour it on 600 metres to go, two and a quarter to Blackheart, Bart Galo chop three lengths to Bonneval being healed up from He's Our Rocky, Hartnell is about eight off the lead and then came inference around the turn, 300 to go, single gaze Sam of there. Then Galo chop a length and a half away. Black Heart Bart to the middle. Bonneville looks to run on. Hartnell's the widest. Single gaze Samovere tired. Galo chop grabs them at the 200. Black Heart Bart and Bonneville with Hartnell are coming. Single gaze Galo chop. Here's Bonneville at the 100. Bonneville up to Galo chop. Bonneville takes Galo chop. And Bonneville won again. Scored from Hartnell or Galo chop for fourth. Black Heart Bart or single gaze. Then inference Samovere. And he's our. A stamina sapping race, and Bonneval, that was just in her hitting zone. For Hugh Bowman, he has taken out the Underwood. For Murray Baker and Andrew Forsman. For Mayor by McPhee, win seven at start ten. She just continues to imp You go back through your record in this race. So you won it with the Fandom back in 1990. You had Lion Tamer in 2011, second up. It's a done deal, second up in 2013. And now this mare. How does she measure up to some of those horses that have won this race in the past? Well, I think she measures up. She's uh, obviously a very good filly. You know, it's a six uh, group win in a row and she knows where the finishing line is. It's quite a, a strong um, 1800 metre event and I've seen a tweet uh, that Dominic Byrne has put out suggesting that it's the second fastest uh, running of the Underwood Stakes since 1994. So with that in mind, Sir Rupert Clark stakes a big field over the 1400 metres and what are the punters telling us here Dicko? Well the answer my friend has been the best back at Crown Bet, uh, very well supported. It's into 420 now so 460 uh, a little while ago into 420 so good late money for the answer. Scales of Justice a couple to Royal Tutor and they were followed by Land of Plenty the outside of Sosi Bond from Santa Anna Lane. They were followed by Lucky Hustler Sovereign Nation it's somewhat toes and stardom and Canny Essent last of all. The answer, my friend, at the 500. Attention's having another dip on the outside. A neck away. Two lengths, Grand Rosso. Mr. Sneaky, the inside. Pushes off three and four deep. Goes wide. Scales of Justice out even deeper. Land of Plenty running on in the straight. The answer, my friend, at the 200. Mr. Sneaky moves up on the outside. Then Sosie Bond, Grand Rosso, Santa Anna Lane. Mr. Sneaky up to the answer, my friend. Santa Anna Lane running on at the 50. Mr. Sneaky in front. Santa Anna Lane is charging home and will get up. Santa Anna Lane from Mr. Sneaky. Sosi Bono, Sovereign Nation. They were followed next by Toes and Stardom. Scales of Justice, the answer might... Santa Anna Lane at 24, 10 and 5, 40 and Dean Yendel has won again. Dean Yendel who scored earlier on and uh, Dean, I'm sure Dean Yendel is absolutely delighted. It's been an outstanding 12 months for Dean Yendel. Another six months has been really solid and, and reliable and consistent, which it hadn't been. And um, he was always one of those horses that that, that that if he got into one of these races, if he could, um, if things went his way, which they obviously did today, he could win one. You know, and today was. 
All the money, uh, of course, is for Winks here. A dollar eighteen out to a dollar twenty-two at Bet Three Six Five. Uh, probably the best uh, piece of information though is that Humidor. The boys are telling me has been friendless. So already amassing thirteen and a half million dollars in prize money. Hugh Bowman riding for Chris Waller, last up winner of the George Main Stakes. She's at a dollar twenty. Only the fourth time we've seen her in Victoria, Gator. She's winning differently this prep, isn't she? But she's winning. And she's running freak, isn't she? But she's winning. And she's running freak times and sectionals. If you only watch the last couple of hundred margin in the Queen Elizabeth in Sydney. Well, you know, there's a superstar stepping out when the jockeys climb the <laughs> Stewart's Tower to watch on. Come up towards the 800 marker. And it's Magic Cool about to be tested here by on the outside, Sir Isaac Newton. And they're two lengths in front of a sign, Ventura Storm. Winks is ever getting so closer. Only about four off the lead and stalks them. Five Followed by Humidor and Skyfire is last around the turn. 500 metres to go. A sign moves up on the outside of Sir Isaac Newton. A link Ventura Storm Winks. Bowman hasn't flinched. He's doing it easily. And then came Humidor, Magical and Skyfire across the track at the 300. Winks has ambled up on the outside. Racing Royalty goes to the lead. Racing's wonder of the world. Puts up two links, three links. Ventura Storm followed by a sign. But it's all Winks. Five or six leaks in front. Look at her go with 100 metres to go. 21 today on the biggest dance floor of them all. Weeks by eight leaks. Ventura Storm second. Humid easily. And then came Humidor, Magical and Skyfire across the track at the 300. Winks has ambled up on the outside. Racing Royalty goes to the lead. Racing's wonder of the world. Puts up two leaks, three leaks. Ventura Storm followed by a sign. But it's all Winks. Five or six leaks in front. Look at her go with 100 metres to go. 21 today on the biggest dance floor of them all. Weeks by eight leaks. Ventura Storm second, Humidor third, fourth assigned, fifth Sir Isaac Newton. And in a battle of the 300 outside of Sir Isaac Newton, Winks breathtaking, and it was so easy, it was scary. Winks is absolutely a breathtaking performance. One of the great performances, David Gately, I think we've ever seen at Flemington. Uh, that was unbelievable. Yeah, it is uh, absolutely freakish. And who said she's not going all that well? I mean, just desperate for the 2,000 metres. She just absorbed all that speed. And they looked to run along at quite a true tempo to the eye. And uh, she just gobbled them up whilst at about half effort. And then, obviously, you saw her race away. And it's been no different the end of her races. And not just the general race. It's a bit of pressure. And um, to see it do what she did today, it was truly winks at her best. We don't often see Group 1 wins by six and a half lengths on the steel here at Flemington in the 150-plus years of history. It was a... a because you know that there's so much anticipation, expectation, excitement around what she is capable of doing. But then for her to deliver it in the way that she did, it was just a special moment. I've only seen it, you know, in recent years, Winks, uh, Black Caviar, I was lucky enough to see Frankel race live. Yep. It's that special star quality that these horses have. Yeah, that's right, and you can go back, you know, even to a mind power beyond that, who who won at Queen Elizabeth here, uh, I think at a dollar forty, won by panels, untouched. I mean, they uh, they don't come around all that often, and when they do, it's uh, something special. And the crowd um, building, as she built into the race, was uh, was extraordinary. Usual, she uh, she was the best of the day. BZ, look, she's the only horse all day at Flemington to break benchmark figures across all three sections. That being to the 800, 800, the 400, and 400 home. Uh, early tempo here. Uh, Here's the Cox Plate market and well she's gone around at $1.25. How she was going or in the back of your head, oh was she struggling in Sydney? Have a look at this if you haven't seen it. This is a demolition job. It certainly is. Wow. Um, she owned this race from the start once, um, you know, she got travelling early. Um, obviously she did really, this is her, you know, greatest strength at 2,000 metres. There's no doubt about it. Um, she travelled better. I uh, just puts them away. I'm, I really still think this horse is a Cups horse, Ventura Storm. Humidor was up back up to his old tricks there of not wanting to go straight. I thought Darren had got that out of his system, but it's a habit he's had throughout his career, and it's a, it's a habit that'll cost you a lot of wins, but as the figures say that she's 
she's going mm. as well as ever. She we get five originally now out to three dollars as you can see on your screen there. All the cash has come for Cliff's Edge since uh, markets went up during the week. Was four dollars for Cliff's Edge is the pilot. Six hundred meters to go has kept them on us. Three quarters of a length sell some more. Then came poised behind the Malawisia. Just needs a little bit of luck and a little bit of room. Followed then by Sanctioned and next Vinda Dance. Cliff's Edge approaches the bend. Three hundred meters out. Aloisia off his back and now the race is on. Two further back is sell some more into the straight. 200 out. Cliff Sedge to be joined on the outside by Aloisia and she goes on by. Aloisia, 100 metres out, draws two leaks, three leaks in front of Cliff Sedge. Oh, Aloisia, very smart indeed, is going to trot in. Aloisia home from Cliff Sedge, Salsamore third, five leaks away, and then Pissarro, Vinda Dance. Aloisia, Luke Nolan, she was a cut above them. As they had to come out deep and was a bit fractious before the race and that. But today's a day when we realise that this is a, a, a top class filly at the very least. Who knows, she might be the type of horse that's back here next year going around in a different 2040 metre race if Winx is overseas in Europe. That was dominant. It was very... It is the race where legends are made, David Gately. We've seen so many champions come through and win a Cox Plate and we've got one of the greats in Winx who's done it for the past two years. That's right, I've been racing a while as you have Shane and loved racing for a long period of time. The build up to this Cox Plate has been phenomenal. Can she do it? Can she be only the second horse in the history of this great race to win it three times? We're about to find out. Yeah, the... And as you can see there on your screen, she's into $1.17 overall. Opened up $1.16 this morning, that's all they want. Multiple winners of a Cox Plate in its long history. Only one has been able to win three and that was Kingston Town. The Pressure's on her, Chris Waller, Hugh Bowman to deliver today, but she's one of the shortest price favourites we've ever seen at $1.16. Should have sent a poet, not a form analyst. Uh, two Cox Plate wins, broke Might and Power's track record. Out onto the track. She looks in a magnificent order, David Gately, as... Uh 1,000 metres to go in the Cox Plate and it's Galo Chop in front by a length. Second is Folkswood. Two further back in the field. Hardham the outside of Seaburge. Then came Winks. Next, Humidor, Happy Clapper. Royal Symphony is last of all towards the side at the 800. Galo Chop in front trying to dictate three quarters of a length. Folkswood. Then came Hardham. Winks peels to the outside now. Then came Seaburge, Humidor, Happy Clapper and Royal Symphony. So with 600 to go, Galo Chop in front but here comes Winks on the outside sliding up now we've waited 35 years for this and Winks moves up to Galo Chop followed further back by Folkswood between them two further back Humidor and Royal Symphony it's Galo Chop at the 350 Winks on the outside Bowman hasn't moved yet the valley's rocking and the world is knocking Winks goes to the front 200 to go Humidor to the outside it's Winks in front by a length Humidor on the outside is trying hard it's Winks in front, Humidor's coming at her, Winks is holding on, the Great Bear completes the Great Trilogy in the turn. Winks has won the Cox Plate by on the outside, Bowman hasn't moved yet, the valley's rocking and the world is knocking, Winks goes to the front, 200 to go, Humidor to the outside, it's Winks in front by a length, Humidor on the outside is trying hard, it's Winks in front, Humidor's coming at her, Winks is holding on, the Great Bear completes the has won the Cox Plate by a half length. Second humidor, a gap to a photo. Folkswood Royal Symphony, Galo Chop also not far away off those, followed by Happy Clapper, and Seaburge was at the tail of the field. Winks has done it, but she gave us a fright. She gave us a... But it is the mighty wink she's done it the queen joins the king relief for chris waller 202.94 which is a, a new course record she broke the course record that she set when winning this race two years ago an unbelievable performance her three cox plate wins have produced the two fastest times since we've had the strathair laid here at mooney valley plus an all-time record margin win as i bring david gately back into the conversation she's been able to hold off him at all there were echoes of Northern Drake as he loomed to beat Might and Power a couple of years ago, but the result was right. The champion won it, Might and Power, back then, and winks today with her third Cox Plate, and she has a great will to win mixed with an, an amazing level of class, very obviously, and breaks her own.
own track record by four one hundredths of a second. Listen to that crowd as she comes back to scale with Hugh Bowman in the saddle. You saw scenes of Chris Waller walking through the uh, crowd here and he was lapping it up as well and rightly so. What an amazing journey. He's a very humble man, Chris Waller, but he has to take a big bow here. I'm with Hugh Bowman on that. It just takes a, a phenomenal individual to keep a great athlete up. It's for such a long period of time and he's done that with this girl, Winks, winning her third Cox Plate and breaking the all-time uh, money-earning record as well on the way. What a fantastic... And on top there, Hugh Bowman. Great <laughs> effort. Yes, that noise coming back. I don't think I've heard anything <laughs> like it. I've been coming off Cox Plates for uh, 25 years as a punter. Great moment. Admiring, admiring the history of this race and, and Australian support, so... It's very humbling to be on the other side looking at everybody. And I just thank them for embracing Winx like she's their own. Take me through your emotion. Provided by Vince Accardi and his IVR benchmarks. Yep. Historical. Um, and as this is a great perspective on lining Winx up against past champions from a times and perspective. If, yeah, if we just leave that up there for a bit. Uh, champ got a mention yesterday. She went past Maccabi Diva's prize money record. She was the shortest prize favourite since Farlap. She's broken another track record over that 2040 at Mooney Valley. What else is there? Uh, 22 <laughs> in a row. Uh, Q Bowman joins the babe. Watching a champion at the top of a game was just uh, it was major numb yesterday. Just watching her so records and her own course record at that. Um, a freakish horse, a freakish horse. But when you analyse the whole situation, I got no doubt it's in her top four performances it's throughout her whole career. There's no doubt about it. I'm, I'm, I don't have any concern about her going overseas to prove herself. She, to me, is she's the best I've ever seen. Mm. I didn't see Frankel in the fresh flesh, but to me, she is just an out-and-out -out champion, and I just appreciate her for what she is and what she's done for us. Sure, surely. I've started to do a bit of work on this. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a Wall of Fire fan. Well, it's a starter. So here for the Coolmore Stud Stakes, right down the bottom, number 19, Invincible Star. For Gay Waterhouse, of course, the stable is shooting for a running double after Sis Montaigne forged his way into... 23, Merchant Navy is 14 out to 17 as we roll on down the bottom of the page. And this is where a lot of activity's been. Uh, firstly, uh, Dracaeus is at 40. Continue to see money for, especially in the last five to ten. Invincible Star, which is $8 into $6, back to six fifty. Well, Melody, the mission's up there with Summer Passage, Good Fella and Hoots and in that group of horses, Viridina's right behind the speed with the white cap onto the course proper at the 600 metres then Lone Eagle, next Kementari Trapeze Artist, Merchant Navy followed further back in the field by Tulip and then came Vassergeist, well back Dracaris out deeper from Andaz and also Limestone, Invincible Star at the 300 metres, lead by a length and a half for Melody, followed by Jukebox Viridine, then came Malahad and Hootson, Invincible Star at the 150, leads by a length Four Melody is trying hard to pick up Invincible Star. It's Invincible Star. Merchant Navy's flashing. Invincible Star holding on. Merchant Navy tries and got up. Right on the line. Merchant Navy has beaten Invincible Star or Four Melody for fourth. A photo. Limestone Dracaris there. Invincible Star at the 150. Leads by a length. Four Melody is trying hard to pick up Invincible Star. It's Invincible Star. Merchant Navy's flashing. Invincible Star holding on. Merchant Navy tries and got up. Right on the line, Merchant Navy has beaten Invincible Star or Four Melody for fourth. A photo, Limestone Dracaris there with also Viridine. Then Malahat, good fella. Merchant Navy gets up. Merchant Navy has won, flying up on the inside. Mark Zara for Aaron Talent. And he was actually quite dominant. The margin was narrow, but his win was extraordinary, in my opinion. And uh, he's only been beaten once. And that was a total forgetful day up there. Had all sorts of issues. Time, Mark Zara was able to get away from the heels of the mission and come right oh. back up along the inside. It continues to look very, very ugly for Catchy oh. back oh. there. She's basically just getting knocked from pillar to post. So all her momentum stopped, complete forgive. But look at the man of ground that Merchant Navy picks up here and you don't really get that same perspective on the lane shot but terrific vision there and this is a smart about this horse has been always you know through the roof the whole way through it look at this for a ride will you um yeah look at this is a sensational ride by zara uh he just he drew 15 i uh, know he, he finds himself weaving back in the field there he, he just took runs that one of the day the amy victoria derby group one level 2500 meters a si early favorite four and he's out to seven dollars and fifty cents so as we look at it there's been a little bit of support 
fought around for a few at some odds. But Corner, 650 metres to go. The leader is Weather With You by three quarters of a length to Sully and Greycliff. Ocean's 14 on the outside. Johnny Vinko behind them. Astoria needs a run. Ace High's the widest into the straight. Estorak's going to go even wider now. Followed next by Pissarro and Justice Faith. Weather With You just in front of Sully as they reach the 300 metres. Two lengths, Astoria, Johnny Vinko, Ocean's 14. Ace High and Estorak down the outside and main stage runs on. Sully at the 200 metres takes Weather With You. Ace High in the middle followed by Astoria main stage. Sully grabbed by Ace High. Sully and Ace High at the 100. Ace High takes the lead from Sully, then Astoria Pissarro, but it's Ace High. Ace High has won the derby. Two lengths, second Sully, third Astoria, fourth Pissarro all main stage, then a Barrow Wolf Ty Anglin has won the Amy Victoria Derby, the Colt by High Chaparral. The high chaps love the trip and presented down the middle. Fully realising his potential because he's come a long way in a fairly short period of time. Look, it's a really good point and I think none of us know what his ceiling is yet. I mean, he's been only been on a sprint trip three times in his life for two Group 1 wins and a terrific uh, lead-up win where, and, and he hasn't had the most peaceful time in the run. Even and, and, but Ty didn't panic and it just took him a while to pick up. But boy, can this bloke stay? Well, well, could he be back here next year as a four-year-old, you know, being a Cups type? Possibly, you know, he's got nice racing style we know he's got staying prowess and uh, oh, jumps from 16 for Hugh Bowman Red Cardinal the outside barrier for Karen McAvoy Johannes Vermeer from three Bond from one Max Dynamite jumps from barrier number two Ventura Storm 15 Thomas Hobson from 21 rekindling from barrier four Emily Star 10 <laughs> <laughs> but it, we're eight dollars the field in a Melbourne Cup did you think you'd ever see it that wide Yes, yeah. this one. This one, yeah, yeah. yeah. Eight or right. twelve bets easily. Uh, Marmelo from me, uh, Wall of Fire, uh, then Rekindling and Almanden. Um, I'm Wall of Fire, a definite saver, Almanden. I'll throw in Marmelo reluctantly, although I just think he's, he's, he's had a right night. Lizzie? Oh, I'm the same as Duff. I'm Wall of Fire, Nikita, uh, Marmelo, and Humidor. Clearly the best backed runner here is Marmelo. Of course, he finished a fast finishing six in the Caulfield Cup. He's ridden by Hugh Bowman, who's already got the Cox Plate under. Uh, and in now as low as $7.50 at Bet365. You can see our Mandon has been heavily supported as well. $7.50 originally, but got out to $10. Libran and US Army Ranger, but in order, 22, 14, 7. Since Marmelo. Yeah. Hops on the outside and well back as Wicklow Brave and US Army Ranger. Sis Montaigne in front, but Marmelo's getting closer on the outside at the 800. Tiberian moves up to third. Boom time behind those in fourth. Johannes Vermeer right behind them. They were followed by Hartnell and Max Dynamite as they run the turn. Next, Ventura Storm. Emily Starr, one of the widest, with single gaze. Further back, Wall of Fire and Big Duke. Almanden's in the pack as well. Sis Montaigne and Marmelo straightened for home, approaching the 400 metres. Johannes Vermeer moves up with Tiberian. Iberian. Max Dynamite then rekindling, followed by Big Duke. Johannes Vermeer takes the lead. 200 metres to go. Johannes Vermeer in front, but here comes rekindling. Johannes Vermeer rekindling. Max Dynamite back to the inside at the 100. Johannes Vermeer rekindling, wearing it down. Johannes Vermeer and rekindling stride for stride. Rekindling has won the Emirates Melbourne Cup. From in second place, Johannes Vermeer, third Max Dynamite. Then came Big Duke, next Nikita Wicklow, Brave Marmello, followed by... He has Quinella the race, Lloyd Williams. He's now won six, and this time he goes one, two. Rekindling has won the Melbourne Cup. Re-establish yourself to win the Melbourne Cup. He's a three-year-old by Northern Hemisphere time, and he has a massive future. He's come a long way over the past 18 months. He was... Rekindling becomes the first horse since Vintage Crop, of course, in 93 to win the Melbourne Cup at its first Australian start. Yeah, well, I tell you what, he's also the youngest horse to have won the Cup for a long, long time. The only, the last... Drew Barrier 4, the, in the placings were Barrier 3 and Barrier 2, so it clearly was advantageous to be on the fence in the run, but a straight fire. But uh, European bred horses, first 12 across the line, they've got a massive influence here on the Melbourne Cup. Yeah, absolutely. These... Thoughts on the Melbourne Cup, it's uh, happened last Tuesday. 
Well, it's, we've we've got all that stats out of our head now anyway. That these things. I, well, he's a young horse. Um, who's to say that he can't come back and win another cup? And uh, I thought he was terrific. And, and Corey Brown, he, you know. What's... Sports bet. So let's have a look at the Dali Classic, the big Group One sprint. And well, Red Zelly went up 370 favourite, and he's on a slight drift out to four dollars. Red Zelly's won his last five. He's a winner down the straight. So we put up Chautauqua seven dollars, and we said Australia. How much do you love him? And they went. Bang! Chautauqua has been the 650 over on the flat side. It's Vega Magic, Red Kirk Warrior, Miss Rock, and also Rock Magic onto the course proper. On the grandstand side, it's Red Zell in front of him. Pending Super Cash followed next in the field by Spieth. Chautauqua was working into it, and further back, clearly Innocent, and back behind them, Malaguira. Over on the far side, Vega Magic, Red Kirk Warrior, and Miss Rock. Red Zell leads the division out here with Super Cash and him pending over on the far side. It's Rock Magic. Magic, Miss Rock and Vega Magic. Red Zell over here, just in front. Terra Vista's flying home, but Red Zell's in front. A marvellous sprinter. Red Zell, three quarters, Terra Vista impending. And for fourth, a photo, Chautauqua or Rock Magic or Clearly Innocent. Then Vega Magic, Super Cash Malaguira, a man from Uncle. But Red Zell has led the division on the grandstand and they couldn't run it down. And what a stellar spring. The Everest, the shorts, and now the Dali. Red Zell defeating be a part of his million dollars. 11 wins and five placings from 21 career starts. It's his second group one. And of course, he also won 108.74, David Gately. There's no doubt about it now. He is the number one sprinter in the country. Yeah, it, he has the title. There's no doubt about that. He's done it all on his own out in front and he's just kept running. He's run slick time. As I say, he hasn't had a tag into it. He's run that time himself. And Terra Vista turned back the clock, got off their heels and hit the line hard. And impending, it was ridden close. Uh, Red Zell. Um, he's uh, he's an absolute beauty. Six straight, would you believe that? And uh, the, the prize money that he's amassed now is just incredible. Um, full steam ahead, I would suggest, for next year uh, with him. Yeah. Uh, with the money on... Uh, who's to think that... What he could end up in with prize money with for a, with the the money around for sprinters these days. That's right. Well, at good value in my opinion. Folks would Galo Shop and Happy Clapper the uh, next best. But with the Darren Weir trained. Wait right for this race. What a race it is. The Emirates Stakes Group One, two thousand metres with two million dollars in prize money on offer. It's time for a market update. Five dollars fifty. Well, I can tell you now, Cliff Sedge got no friends whatsoever. The three-year-old with the fifty-one kilos, and it's Folkswood. Who is your favourite? Ford wide with a truck up from Sosie Bon Happy Clapper, then Toes and Stardom, Sense of Occasion, Harlem, and Samavera's last approaching the turn in the Emirates. Six hundred to go. It's Galo Chop just in front of Cliff Sedge. Folkswood joining in three deep now. It's somewhat four deep, and Odie and underneath of it, Sosie Bon is poised behind them, followed by the Taj Mahal. Toes and Stardom needs an out. Happy Clapper's the widest followed by Samavere, but Cliff Sedge moves up on the outside of Galo Chop at the 300, followed by the Taj Mahal, Folkswood, and Odie in a great finish. Cliff Sedge at the 200 trying to shake off Galo Chop, followed by the Taj Mahal, Folkswood and Odie, and still Cliff Sedge, the three-year-old, 100 to go, the Taj Mahal, and Toes and Stardom's gone out! Toes and Stardom dropped from the sky and won the Emirates! Toes and Stardom by a length and a half! Second, up for second, Happy Clapper, then for third, Taj Mahal was probably 100, followed by the Taj Mahal, Folkswood, and Odie in a great finish. Cliff Sedge at the 200, trying to shake off Galo Chop, followed by the Taj Mahal, Folkswood, and Odeon. Still Cliff Sedge, the three year old, 100 to go. The Taj Mahal, and Toes and Stardom's gone out. Toes and Stardom dropped from the sky and won the Emirates. Toes and Stardom by a length and a half. Second, up for second, Happy Clapper, then for third, Taj Mahal was prominent. Folkswood, Cliff Sedge, not too far away with it somewhat in a great finish behind us toes and stardom at 660 and 240 needed an out at the top of the straight and there was a wall in front of it but it's burning horse he is toes and stardom two group ones for the spring carnival he took out the two rack over 1600 and you would have thought oh this is it's all over yeah, it's all over and then he picked himself up and he, he really showed his sprint at 2000 meters here he he was terrific happy was great just uh he just kept coming 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 happy clapper that's was, he's probably 1800s is probably happy clapper's best distance but he didn't throw it away he, he kept grinding away 
away there. There was a pack behind there, but geez. It was a pretty good run, beating three and a half lengths behind Red Zell, the Everest winner. Number eight, State Solicitor, William Pike rides for Grant and Alana Williams. It's out the door. You can't ride a bet for it. Three ten out to five dollars. From the lead, 650 to go. The Mayor Kai Perinha led the way. Comes off the riverside, three quarters in front. Malibu style, ridden along to stay with a second. Girondel third, down on the inside. Whispering Brook fourth and getting a great run to the corner. Profit streaks down on the inside from Dainty Tess. Vidora getting up inside of those, travelling well. Starts to shoulder into the clear. State solicitor still well back in proceedings as Kai Perinha heads for home. On the outside, Girondel, Whispering Brook. Furick has got right up near the rail. Profit Streets weaving his way through it. Here's the South Aussie mare, Vidora. It's Vidora with 100 to go. She bursts through in the middle, races to the lead, and the winner bottom's all over. Vidora, the pride of South Australia, beat Furick. Durandal third from Profit Street. Santa Adelaide from last. Rock Magic Dainty Test next home. The Vidura, ridden by Joe. South Australian victory for Vidora in the Winterbottom Stakes and Lloyd Kennywell. The record when you go back through it is just amazing actually and um, he, he just knows a lot the back of his hand. He spaces the runs, I think she was the Moya, yep. 28 days to the Manicato, 36 days to that race with the trip and uh, he just knows that uh, how she didn't turn ugly but it, everything went p a picture perfect there for that mare. Uh, Bowditch knows her well, he knew he was on a well prepared uh, mare and boy when she got in the clear didn't she, didn't she sprint? She was uh, she was so dominant there. Uh, Furic as we, you know, she, she missed the start and probably to strip off the rails and also Holy Seal as they come up towards the turn at the 600 metres. A length and a half for Lente, followed by Streets of Avalon and Magnorum, two lengths the Regiment Strella and Frankel My Dear at the end of the field at the dip at the 450. Holy Seal on the inside rallies through to lead Nature Strip at this stage by three quarters of a length. Two and a half Streets of Avalon, Valente, the Regiment and they were followed by Strella. Holy Seal given a slap with the whip but Nature Strip goes on by with 150 metres to go. Wants to lug in towards the inside Side, but absolutely raced away. Look at the turn of foot here. Nature Strip four or five lengths in front. Jock puts the whip away. That was superb. Nature Strip by Deer at the end of the field at the dip at the 450. Holy Seal on the inside rallies through to lead Nature Strip at this stage by three quarters of a length. Two and a half streets of Avalon Valente the regiment and they were followed by Strella. Holy Seal given a slap with the whip but Nature Strip goes on by with 150 metres to go. Wants to lug in towards the inside but absolutely raced away. Look at the turn of foot here. Nature Strip four or five lengths in front. Jock puts the whip away. That was superb. Nature Strip by five lengths. Holy Seal Streets of Avalon. Valente Strella. Might be a humble Wednesday at Sandown, but that was tremendous. Nature Strip, a way to win $22,000 into the kitty. Ryan Maloney puts the whip away. A little sneak peek over at the screen and then a little grin. In fact, more than a little grip for Nature Strip or Nature Strip. Win three at start four. Defeats number two, Holy Seal. Race seven of the Gold Coast, two million dollars up for grabs. The three-year-old guineas at the Magic Millions. And the favourite is the first one we look at, Duff Pirata for Greg Hickman. Missing three-year-old who only needs to hold his form and get a, a you know, trouble-free run to prove hard to beat. First you didn't run. Fighter Pinch Passion. Just in behind those horses. Seller Girl is back of the tail. Lady of Crabelli and Shagun Sun's out very wide about fourth or fifth last is YPO just in front from Sasso Cabarro. Calculated has been wide. Pierre Rada still back about six over on the inside looking for the way clear at the 325. YPO just in front here from Sasso Cabarro. Next over on the inside good fella. Pierre Rada's got plenty of room to come through and Calculated's on the outside. YPO's just in front but here's Pierre Rada. He got the gap and he darted through. Later's good fella but Pierre Rada's in front. He's a brilliant cult on the bonus goes off. Pierre Rada's one by length and a half to Goodfellow. Third calculated photo for St. Patrick's Day YPO. Then Shogun's won. The richest cheque ever to, to be presented to winning owners for a Queensland race. $1.6 million going to Parata. One point. Came across with luck. I was just in the sail ring and I looked out in the left shoulder and there he was and I had to have him. Didn't have a client. Paid 160 for him. Erica thinks I'm mad and go home and you do your best. Yeah. Because 160 is a lot, isn't it? It is when you haven't got it. One winner, they're expected to put on the barbecue come Monday morning for breakfast, bacon and eggs and the likes, and they're having a good day. Gary Nixon just yep. had a winner in Sydney.
of course, um, Greg Hicks. Witherspoon, likewise, Secret Lady is going forward. So Secret Lady is now just in front here, passing over on the inside. Jonker, oh, Jonker got skittled. Jonker lost about three or four lengths there. And F Trooper's burnt clear now. It's F Troop about five lengths in front. Sunlight goes up into second, passing Secret Lady Ray and Crockett's about five lengths away. F Troop's in front of the 350, led by about a length and three quarters here from Sunlight. They're well clear from Witherspoon on the outside. Nomathage, Secret Lady, Merrill's back over on the inside. F Troop is still the leader. Sunlight on the outside is looming up now. It's F Troop and Sunlight clear from out back Barbie. But Sunlight has reached the lead now from F Troop. Out back Barbie. Full as a boot jumping up out of the ground. But Sunlight for the millions. Sunlight's won it brilliantly by three lengths too. Full as a boot. A massive run. Third out back Barbie. Fourth was F Troop. Followed by Secret Lady. Sunlight the filly has won the Magic Millions and won it easily from Full as a Boot who's... You need to be ready for a grand final. It is a grand final. It's high pressure. They went out very hard and she was up in that zone and then to still finish as strong as she did. Uh, not only is she a star filly, but she had the edge on fitness. A, a couple of the journeys were, were... Yeah, I was very concerned. I could see something that was going to happen. But I tell you what I took great comfort in was the courage of Luke Curry and his experience. Luke made the decision to go up in there and, and protect himself. And if had coming out of that, would not have protected him. Uh, and uh, he rode up in there. He used those horses around him. And at, uh, I think that moment won us the race. Yeah. Definitely. And so, back to 2.35. So good money around for Vidor. And, and of course, there was that big 40K bet or $40,000 bet uh, at 2.80 all in. Mm. Well, as soon as we open this. Uh, Dave uh, certainly looks the one to beat uh, Vidora. She's a group one winner at a most recent start and absolute. Half a length away to Egyptian symbol and Vidora still back third last about to get right to the outside. She's still five lengths off Snitzcraft at the 375. He's just in front from Dothraki. Vidora out wide. Egyptian symbol followed by Irish Constabulary and Le Cordon Bleu is the deepest. Snitzcraft is still the leader. Here's Vidora on the outside. Side. She's finishing strongly. Le Cordon Bleu down the outside, but Vidora, she sprints clear with 50 metres left to go. A queue up the miners, but all too classy, Vidora. Vidora's won the last by three lengths. Seconds a photo between Snitzcraft and Egyptian Symbol. Close that Kaepernick or Le Cordon Bleu for fourth next year. Well, she's a Group 1 horse, and she has played with them in the sprint today. Race and the class did prevail, in the cheers, very, very classy. So, who knows what, there's no limit to her sprinting ability. Well, Bernie... But it's still hard to do. Yeah, she loves to run space, and she loves to travel the country, there's no doubt about it. Left-hand tracks, right-hand tracks, down the straight, who cares? She's just a beauty. Uh, I thought they slowed a bit for a sprint race here, and, and Bowditch knew that. He got on his bike before the turn and got her into her rhythm and I thought it was a smart move even though she she won with authority yeah. anyway he he just took that dangerous part of the race out and start him mr let's have a look at the market here for the CF4 stakes courtesy of bet 365 toast and stardom heavily backed four dollars is your favorite there's been huge money for him over the past couple of days Hartnell second pick five now out to six dollars miss Lord of the sky toes and stardom third three deep dollar for dollar fourth the inside from Shah Hitzi a length to Hartnell mighty boss on the inside mid Field from Brave Smash. Our deeper Mr. Sneaky with cover, followed by Jester Halo. The insider single gaze from Abby Marie and Tuling Shalali up around the corner at the 400 metres. It's thrown them and on the outside, Lord of the Sky, dollar for dollars poised. Toes and stardom three deep roused into it, followed by Mighty Boss Shah Hitsi. Hartnell presents down the centre with Mr. Sneaky, followed by single gaze. Thrown them at the 200 metres from Lord of the Sky, dollar for dollar behind them, followed by Toes and stardom. Hartnell and Mr. Sneaky. It's thrown him just in front of Lord of the Sky at the 50. Hartnell's lifting. Hartnell lifting. The big boys come back in style and won it from a photo. Flashing through single gaze on the inside and brave smash from the clouds. Followed by thrown him Lord of the Sky in photos. Behind those horses, dollar for... There she is and then thrown him. And then behind them, Lord of the Sky and Mighty Boss in a bunch finish. It was a terrific race. Hartnell is the winner. And he didn't really turn at all, and I was quite worried about him and had to be firm with him a fair way out. And thank goodness he lifted to the quality of the horse that he is. Horse is his finest shake Muhammad has ever had in training in Australia. And uh, he's, he's, he's the horse's third group one uh, since arriving here. But um, 
of course, he's been the sparring partner. He, he was the one, uh, you know, like I said, six months ago, he was the second best horse in the country. Sort of. Well, as you said earlier in the show, Duff, he missed all the trouble by being out wide, but he was out wide and he was doing it tough. Yeah, he was, uh, but an uninterrupted run here. And I only put the pole out because I couldn't work out who was the most unlucky. I replayed this race when I got home 10 or 15 times and I'm going, well, that should have won. And then I looked at another one, that should have won, that should have won, that should have won. He dodged the trouble. Uh, Hartnell, he's, he's good, fresh, and he gets the job done there pretty well. Um, look. He needs urging. There's a couple of little things that you have to, you have to squeeze out of him. It's, um, but he's, he's a very talented horse. It's another sin in front, racing to the turn from single bullet and on the outside, Siege of Quebec. Three of them across the track. On the inside, another sin being joined by Siege of Quebec. Single bullet between them trying to rally and Kemantari's now slipping off heels into the straight now. Siege of Quebec takes the front. Kemantari's giving chase. So's Brave Song and Assimilate to the outside. The Siege could be over. Kemantari heads it off and burst clear. Kemantari, Brave Song, Assimilate making ground but Kemantari's off and gone to the Eskimo Prince. Siege of Quebec held second, Brave Song third, followed by Lord Cecil and Assimilate wide out. Further back. A good cult, a good cult. I'd like to replay form line from third. Yeah, this was a very good win. You know, like, I thought it was a lovely ride by Glynn because the fence was no good. He drew barrier three. He, he just edged, 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 edged and found the, the dangers back and then come around him. Everything was absolutely perfect in the run, but he capitalised on it. He's, he, he's always been an exciting horse. In his first prep, we thought... Oh. Remains the solid favourite at $4.60, has been well backed throughout the day. Day so far, and he's your market leader. Uh, some others to touch. Keb then Eshterak, well back as Vinland main stage, and Pissarro is last. It's Sao Sao into the straight at the 400 metres. Violet at a half to scare Crow and Cliff's Edge the outer. Then embellish Island Missile, Grunt up the middle of the track from Sunquest, followed next in the field by Mura Keb and Eshterak is winding up, but Cliff's Edge at the 200 metres takes the lead from Scarecrow. Grunt on the outside, then Sao Sao. It's Cliff's Edge with 100 metres to go. Grunt wearing him down, Cliff's Edge a fighter, Grunt moves up, takes the lead and it's Grunt, Grunt three quarters, Cliff's Edge, third in the race, Murakeb or main stage doing a bit late, then embellish and Scarecrow, Grunt the winner, Damien Oliver, two on the bounce and the two traditional races for the three-year-olds, the Debonair and also the Vanity, Grunt, real up and in the uh, Rupert Lee Colours, win three at start number four, Damien Oliver for Mick Price, who is having a... ...around the mounting yard here for the feature sprint race, the 64th running of the Black Caviar Lightning, and, of course, named in honour of the unbeaten super champion who had... ...turn it has been, with Red Cell still your favourite, dollar eighty into dollar seventy, but now slight ease out to dollar seventy-five, but does remain a dominant... ...field Red Kirk Warrior, onto the course proper at the 600 metres, Super 2 in the middle in front of Ball of Muscle, Hay Doc, Red Cell, they're outside. They were followed by Terra Vista Rock Magic. Miss Rock, out deeper on the track is Four Melody and Sapito from Red Kirk Warrior. 300 metres to go at Super 2 under pressure, grabbed by Red Cell. McAvoy hasn't moved. Ball of Muscle back to the inside from Haydock and down the outside, Sapito. Red Cell with 150 metres to go strikes the front. Rock Magic late with Miss Rock, Red Kirk Warrior, but it's Red Cell in front. Red Kirk Warrior's flying home. Red Zell or Red Kirk Warrior, I'm not sure. Photo finish in the lightning, what a thriller. Third photos, Miss Rock Sapito there. Red Kirk Warrior, Regan Bayless for Hayes, Hayes and Dabernick has bloused Red Zell right on the mirror, right on the mirror. What a thrilling race, Red Kirk Warrior. Yeah, he, he's a high talent, and it's incredible to think that his first start in his life, he won a 2,000 metre race at Newmarket in his maiden. So he's running at half his debut distance, which probably has never been done. And he ran down a champion and ran incredible sectionals to do it. So I think Red Zell lost no admirers. And uh, when you have a look at his sectionals here, uh, Red Zell doing everything to win the race. And your blokes come home last 800, 41.99, last 600, 31.59, last 421.21, last 210.64. Red Zell's done everything bar win the race. It just goes to show how exceptionally good your horse is here fresh. That was an unbelievable win. It was just incredible because um, I thought, you know, it was a good margin back to third. In good ground late there.
offer for the Group 1 Blue Diamond Stakes for the two-year-olds over 1,200 metres. A fantastic betting race and one of the most open Blue Diamonds in recent years. Bet 365 markets. There's been a lot of support coming through for numerous runners, but there has been one huge go today, and that is for written by. This morning it was $11, and now into $6. And Quafila last, crossing the Abbey at the 550. Leads three quarters written by. Lady Horse owner up around the outside, three deep from Prairie Fire, stalking them. Then Ennis Hill, next aristocratic miss. Further back in the field, Plague Stone, a hood to the outside, only about four off the lead. It's written by, taking the lead at the top of the straight. Written by from Lady Horse owner, Ennis Hill, Prairie Fire back to the inside. Enbaha late down the outer. Written by at the 200 metres, two legs in front. Enbaha charging on the outside, but it's written by, written by for Jordan Childs. What a victory, what a moment for the young man. Three legs, Enbaha, a hood third for fourth. Prairie Fire prominent from encryption. Written by Jordan Childs. His father, Greg, won the race back in 1992 with Reva Diva. And written by has stormed a victory for trainer Graham Beek, the cult by written tycoon out of Yao Chin. Jordan Childs from the outside gate. He, written by had that wide gate, so but he's so quick out of the gates, isn't he? You can see him here. The, uh, although he doesn't find the fence, what you can see from this angle too is that he uses a straight line from the barriers to the bend. So if you can, well, I've got to go now. And what, that acceleration he showed from that about 300 metre mark was enough to put the race away. Uhud's run on well again. Um, the Plague second filly right. played stuff. It's a job. Just the way that she is presented second up, she's got that fitness edge over a couple of these other runners. She's very confidence at the same time. It's another one of these races today that I want to look and learn a little bit as far as the slippers colt. So I'm marking them four, seven, one, and five. I'll stick with this filly sunlight. I know she's got a little improvement to come, but she has got. It's in a sec, but it's Clark takes hold on sunlight, just getting a nice toe into the race third. And they're beaten off Knievel and Gongs coming to the turn. And neutrality the outsider head in front. Esther Jarb still on the bridle comes back. Sunlight's peeling off their heels giving chase. And then came Gongs down to the 300. It's neutrality. Esther Jarb and Sunlight's chiming in now. Neutrality's run its race. Esther Jarb still has gas in the tank. Sunlight the outside goes to it. It's Sunlight and Esther Jarb. The fillies are ripped clear of the field. Sunlight the outside of Esther Jarb. Sunlight had the better run. She's just in front, and Clark gets her home in the silver slipper. Sunlight wore down a game, Esther Judge, and they finish well clear of the rest. Gong's in third, then came Neutrality and Knievel. If you're a Sydney racing fan, you better go, get, be, start to be excited about this golden slipper because that silver slipper has delivered something special. The Esther Jarb was taking rest. Uh, you said it. Two outstanding fillies. Look at the gap. Where are they? Where's the rest of them? There's, there they are. And that's market along with Esther Jarb. And there we see written by at $6. So um, the best two year olds starting to come to the um, top of the market as they. Trade here and here she comes she just sat behind them here relaxed beautifully she's got a lovely racing brain this sunlight she she just does uh, everything perfectly right gets the right run finishes off I think there's more fitness to come than she's probably six weeks between runs here and uh, she must have done well because Tony's saying another run the week before the slipper Estijab lost no admirers here they run very far and the second last race in gloomy conditions light on Race seven from Yarra Valley. To assimilate number eight, $31 into $20. Here, Pirata firms up late. Some big bets for it too. $6 into $4.60 now. So... Uh... Last 10 off the lead. Estrapeze artist on top with a favourite, Kementari, breathing down his neck at the 600. CJ Quebec is being roused along in third. Then a sigh from Brave Song. And now Pirata is being revved up, giving chase to the leaders. On the turn, Trapeze artist. Clark is swinging off it at the moment from Kementari, the outside. Then CJ Quebec back from Ace High, Brave Song and Parada to the outside. Kamantari's getting serious now. He lays it down to Trapeze Artist. Parada's going to third. A hundred out. Kamantari draws clear from Trapeze Artist. Then came Parada and Dargetto late, but Kamantari, great ride by Schofield on the speed and Kamantari wins the Hobart field. Photo for the miners, Pirata and Dargetto. Trapeze Artist home in fourth. Further back to Ace High. Uh, yeah, he rode, he rode his horse. He didn't ride the man.
map. He just rode him absolutely perfectly when uh, CJ Quebec didn't, and he put him to bed there at the 150 there. Uh, these second and third or still at market with no significant moves. Cliff's Edge still heads the market now, currently at $4.40. Grunt hasn't moved from uh, $6, now into $5.50, so there is that support. And then came Aloisia Holy Snow, and Mr. So and So is last around the corner. 500 metres to go in the $1 million Australian Guineas, and it's Cliff's Edge in front by about three legs around the turn. From in second place, Bring Me Roses, who rails through, followed by Addictive Nature. Grunt to the outside from Peaceful State, main stage Villamont into the clear. Cliff's Edge at the 300 metres, two and a half. Bring Me Roses, they're getting closer. Grunt. Peaceful State and Villamont down the outside. Cliff Sedge at the 150. Grunt bring me roses and Peaceful State. Grunt lifts in the middle of the 50. Peaceful State going with it. Grunt and neck Peaceful State. Grunt fights. It's a trier. It's a winner. Grunt wins it from Peaceful State. Bring me roses. Villamont followed by Holy Snow. Moura Kip sells some more embellished main stage. Cliff Sedge. What a lovely run in transit and presented at the right time. Had Peaceful State as a real threat and they fought out. 1,600 metre horses. Uh... Um, you know, they were both good horses on the day. Uh, this horse has got 2,000 metres in him, no question. He's probably got a mile and a half. He might even have two miles in him. I'm not sure, but uh, he's, he's just a big, clean-winded, uh, really good colt. Congratulations, Mick. An hour away from Winx's return at $1.80. $1. Wouldn't you love that? $1.08 to $1.10 on the tote and double figures for the rest. Uh. Yep, and... He's on his way from the middle of the theatre, a horse where they, they gathered a leg, a leg. For the thrill seekers, Glenn. All is in readiness. Classic uniform from Prize Icon. Vinland moves up into a three wide position, uh, followed by Who Shot the Barman, and then Libra. And, uh, Winks is still back, second last of the 600 metres, but starting to creep into the race now. And three further back to Lasquetti Spirit. Uh, on the point of the turn, it's Stampede in front. Classic uniform comes off the fence. Prize Icon third, and Winks is starting to loop the field. 400 out. It's Stampede in front. But Winks, uh, Hugh Bowman just sitting there like a department store mannequin, hasn't Touch the mare and off she goes. Price like on going home in a second. And Libran's making ground, but nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Away she goes, the champ. And this is an Australian record of 16 Group 1s. Winks powers away to beat Price Icon and makes it three Chipping Nortons. Classic unit put in front, but Winks. Uh, Hugh Bowman just sitting there like a department store mannequin. Hasn't touched the mare and off she goes. Price like on going home in a second. And Libran's making ground, but nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Away she goes, the champ. And this is an Australian record of 16 Group 1s. Winks powers away to beat Price Icon and makes it three Chipping Nortons. Classic uniform third in front of Libron. Then came who shot the... No matter where you're watching, anywhere on this earth, make no mistake about it, she is the best in the world. There are none better. Look at everybody the right uh, information today and she's back bigger and better than ever. They're hanging over the rafters here. Oh, mate, it's fantastic. Have a look at the crowd. You know, this is what people want to see. Horses come back, regardless of whether they're winks or who they are. So to see it come back like this is pretty special. Uh, once again, we're in the presence of greatness and we saw Winx make it 23 straight and win her 16th Group 1 win in a row. You never get sick of it. Ron Duffus... He was, Greg, a, what is it, a three-year winning streak and uh, we're not get, uh, getting sick of it, that's for sure. But, geez, I, I, I wouldn't... I don't want her to see her travel. I want to, I want to have her here. I wanted to see her win another Queen Elizabeth. I want to see her win another Cox Plate, uh, which she can do. Uh, do we want to... ...remain one day and Winx went straight past him when he reckons he was, you know, at full throttle and flying. And, and you know, he's on prized icon, which was primed to the minute, and look what she does to him. I spoke to Glenn yesterday after the race and uh, he said uh, he just couldn't believe what just happened. He said the way she went past me is, is as good as she's ever gone in his opinion and I think Glenn Schofield's all right we don't feel for Glenn you know all he has to do is open internet back gone in his opinion and I think Glenn Schofield's all right we're six dollars the field now so we've got a little bit more money back for Merchant Navy so six dollars
Merchant Navy. Red Kirk's held at 750. Brave Smash still there at eight. And Rich Charm got in as long as seven. Lord of the Sky from Booker and Rock Magic, the outside from Brave Smash. And then came Rich Charm, Merchant Navy. And Ken's Dream is last of the division over on the flat side at the 600 metres. Over on this side, it's Red Kirk Warrior just in front of Thronum, Lucky Liberty and Sapito, followed by Miss Rock and Catchy, then Fast Net Tempest and Sosi Bon. Over on the flat side, it's Booker with Rock Magic chiming in. Lord of the Sky followed by Brave Smash. Rich Charms running on from Merchant Navy. Red Kirk Warrior leads the division over here at the 200 metres. Rock Magic and Booker over on the flat side with Brave Smash coming through as well. Brave Smash descends at the 50, takes the lead. Red Kirk Warrior going with it. Photo finish, they're wide apart. Brave Smash, Red Kirk Warrior, followed by Merchant Navy, followed next in the field by Rock Magic on the flat side. Sapito over this side with catchy day tonight is going to nail Brave Smash. And Merchant Navy not beaten that far either in third. And then a further photo for King Records. He was the first horse in 100 years to win a Newmarket first up last year. He's the first horse to go Newmarket, Lightning, Newmarket. There could be more records coming his way. He's two runs back. He's up to a, nine, a mile now. And hopefully he's very versatile. And uh, just that acceleration factor that he's got. If he can bring... Actually be a little bit better than some of the, the general type of horse that we get in the Randwick Guineas. Uh, it's sort of like a, a pyramid, isn't it? This one, they've got 600 metres to run. And Condor and Aralita from Trapeze Artists, then Siege Quebec. Anglin gets going early on Ace High, swilling it up four deep around the turn. Then Peaceful State from Parada. Further back to Keonic and Kemantari gets to the outside. Coming up the rise now. Siege Quebec sustains the run. Going to join Trapeze Artists. Ace High is battling now. Kemantari to the outside. And further back to Parada. Kemantari gets going now at the 150. Kemantari. He dashes away in the round with Guineas from Trapeze Artist Parada fighting out second and third, but it's a favourite victory. Kemantari beats Parada, Trapeze Artist third, and I think Ace High may have grabbed fourth just in front of Siege of Quebec, followed in by K. He's the real deal, he can run a mile. He wins a group one. Kemantari in the blue, Godolphin colours. Glenn Schofield, Doncaster next, 240, 140. Kemantari beats Parada the same way they finished in the Hobartville and trapeze artist is third in front of class horses have just about finished the first three and i think the two picks of the yard fought it out there and one two um you know kemantari he's a, he's just a he's a mouth-watering colt he's silky smooth and uh he's he's um he's lovely patient ride by schofield i must say he, he's getting on beautifully with this horse at the moment he's the, the confidence is oozing through with horse and rider when he presses the button here at the 175 it's all over and away he goes He's a um, look. He's an outstanding prospect, isn't he? Whether he goes to a Doncaster Mile, I, I'd suggest probably yes. If he does well, why not? Chris Waller, the trainer, going for their third Group One George Rider. Yeah, we're running out of things to say. It just gives you goosebumps when you see everyone. We're out with their phones out, taking videos of her and and just capturing us from the uh, a spell as the the champ gets a big chair, just cantering past the winning post there, uh, going. That's where the fortune is. So Ben's are now officially on. Uh, sorry, not today. Overall, about three quarters of that today. Such is the happy clapper. So Invincible Jim ups the speed at this point. Two and a half further back to Kemantari. Wings gets going on the outside from Crack Me Up. And clearly innocent last. Invincible Jim is trying to slip away on the turn. Two and a half clear from Happy Clapper. Here's Wings moving up on the outside. And Kemantari, the Colts trying to go with the champ. Invincible Jim, three lengths clear from Wings getting into her work now. She went straight past Kemantari. Happy Clapper's running the big race today, but Wings moves up now at the 150. Heads off a game, Happy Clapper. Kemantari gets going late, but Wings is edging clear for a world record of 17 group ones, and Wings wins it by three quarters to Happy Clapper at a game, Kemantari. Crack me up in fourth, an invincible gem, and a clearly innocent. And now the world awaits the decision. Will the equine queen go over to meet Her Majesty? How are they ever going to beat her? Happy Clapper, he tried hard today. Sea of blue as they hit the line. Winks, Happy Clapper, Kemantari. She's Tari. She's done it again. 24 in a row. Black Caviar's record of 25 awaits next start, but 17. Oh, you're a great horse. Oh, my pony.
a massive crowd at Rose Hill Gardens to see a champion. Some seeing her for the first time perhaps today in, in the... Sydney really appreciated. Uh, there wasn't the pressure. This is clever writing by the opposition. The way to try and beat Wings, it doesn't work, but the way to try and do it is make it a, a low pressure contest. And then she has to try and out sprint you because if it's a test of stamina, she's just going to flog you as she does every time. She did out sprint them though. From the 400 to the 200, she broke 11 seconds. That's phenomenal. Uh, how good of a horse is Happy Clapper? He's a star. Look at how, how good he is holding off a, a good three year old in Kementari who. <laughs> Put in respect yesterday by getting so close to her. Well, uh, they're, they're good horses. The opposition, I did say, good horses. We're talking about uh, this is the this is more or less the all even cracked me up's gone well here. Uh, this is serious serious form for the Doncaster Mile. She was amazing. Uh, I guess just one point. I was coming up in two weeks. Slipper candidates coming down the race here in front of a massive crowd at Rose Hill Garden. Five two ten and one hour numbers. So on top performer ahead of Santos Sunlight and written by right uh, long lease at the rear Esther Jarve eventually found the front from written by and Santos working on the outside then Sandbar on the inside of Sunlight and further back then to uh, Fiesta as they turn the corner Esther Jarve in front from written by and Santos Sunlight Fiesta and Seabrook to the outside Sandbar back to the rails Esther Jarve still the leader from written by Santos Sandbar up the inside our Merton's closing up a hood's getting out Leaf, uh, Prairie Fire and Quafila. Tears of joy from the brothers Wayne and Michael Hawks with their father John Hawks. They've won another golden slipper in the same colours as... Excuse me. Yeah, she did, you know. Like, she drew the outside barrier. And uh, for Brenton to do what he did, he summed it up. And the greatest shot... Much to you. Written by in fourth. 1.12.01, officially the time. Home in 34.4. Uh, was getting close to the finish line. Can Guys, can you remember the feeling? Can you, rem can you just take us back... 12 hours or so to what you guys were feeling as you're watching her coming up the straight in a fight? You go. Go, you. Yeah, I'll, honestly, I... We actually went and stood in the same spot. And uh, all the prize money that she's earned, she's, uh, she's obviously a very good filly. And to, and to, to cap off the, the filly trifecta, Sunlight's been very, very good all the way through. Written by was the first cult home there. Considering... Go. 151 with... Seven. This is the Herald's Australian Derby, 2,400 metres. Rack outstanding performance last time in defeat. I think he can uh, claim the Victoria ATC Derby here, Ace High. But Furor's run was... ...win in the Tullock Stakes, but I don't think he really needs to. He's a lovely staying type, and he should get a... Six into five, Furor, seven, seven, fifty in a point and a half to six dollars. Lavendi further backed, eleven dollars into seven dollars. They're the chief one. And Marshall and Salsamore sees them all. 600 metres to run, capital gain, main stage... Vinda Dance, Furor, Condor behind them, Ace High's pulling to the outside, then Weather With You, Mongolian Conco looking to slice through the field as they straighten up now, then came in down at head of the straight main stage in front from Vinda Dance and Ace High charming in from Furor and Lavendi's coming from further back down to the 250, Ace High in front, Lavendi's the big danger, it's Ace High half in front to Lavendi, they've broken clear for a great stash, Lavendi moves up to Ace High, Ace High won't sit down, away third to Tangled, then came Vin. Tied nose down, Lavendi comes back, they hit the line, Lavendi on the outside, looks as though it might have got up. It could Mahogany and Dulcify were the two last two to do the double. Ace High was 
denied by what looks to be a nose, and it is. It's a nose. Here's Lavendi coming back. Well, the out stayed with about 50 metres to go, but uh, he, he had another dive and got the bob in, and that was a... And then the, uh, you know, then the pain barrier with a staying prowess of ace high kicks back. He's in front a stride before and a stride after the post, but uh, that's a pretty good training performance from, from the Gallagotis boy, the team Gallagotis, because they've got the... Tad a bit. All right. We uh, Royal Randwick, the TJ Smith runners are in the yard. Uh, Corey Brown is out. Werribee, hope to squeeze it in first. Got her claims. Definitely a lot stronger this year. Eight on top in her time. Uh, a global glamour. Then take down from Fell Swoop Trapeze Artist off the track. Then Brave Smash on the inside of the mission. Le Remain. And the girls are back in the field in her time. And English will have to come around them. Coming to the turn. Red Zell, the favourite lead. Out by a half on Jungle Edge. Global Glamour third. Trapeze Artist has been wide. Then take down from Fell Swoop. Brave Smash is looking for runs. Further back to Le Remain. English to the outside. In her time. Times in a traffic jam as Red Zell zips away at the 200 from Trapeze Artist who's sticking on. Trapeze Artist going after Red Zell. Red Zell and Nick in front, ahead in front. Trapeze Artist goes past him and Trapeze Artist takes out the TJ. Big win, Trapeze Artist from Red Zell. And in her time, no luck at all in third, followed by Lure Remain, then the mission. Good. Trapeze Artist, Ty England for Gerald Ryan. What a dominant for the second time there he had good support on track here and uh, like you said he is a giant killer uh, when you least it's 40 to 1 he was nowhere near that price yesterday but he was he wasn't favorite he was he was about nine ten dollars he was well tried though in, in obviously a good race but boy geez he's, he, he can produce a performance this horse i think you described him as a giant killer yesterday that's exactly the way uh, to describe him he's a, he's a brilliant horse when he's right and he was certainly on his game yesterday look he, he's been patched like they stretched him up to a mile and, and Tony Clapper on top number three three nine eleven and four uh, Tony's thoughts on the star Doncaster we'll hear from him a little closer to start time let's get to Kembla for the concentrating endless drama great Ruffy to include at 20 to one happy Clapper will run his usual on this race and invincible Jen here and under under those racing toast and start and hopped up in the air at the start he's going to settle last Mr Seawolf taken back and Dargento as well happy Clapper jumped away swell so did Egg Tart toast and start and cracked me up from Lanciato, Mr. Seawolf and Dargetto's last 500 metres to run. Ah, uh, beats him and Tom Melvin having an arm wrestle for the lead. Pulling out now is Invincible Gem coming through. Happy Clapper back to the inside. Kim and Tari looking for gaps as they come up the rise. Happy Clapper hard up the fence. Happy Clapper joins up. Beats him and Tom Melvin coming through. Kim and Tari needs to lift. Happy Clapper the 175. Home late, followed by Tom Melbourne, Humidor, then Lanciato from Cool Chap, Kemantari, Egg Tart next from Crack Me Up, prized icon. He's run second in two Doncasters, he's run placings in, in Group 1s, he got that Group 1 in the Epsom and he got one in the Canterbury Stakes, but to, to win a Doncaster, one of the great races on the Australian turf. Three, uh, it's the fastest Doncaster in history. Belmira Lad has held this Doncaster record since 1979 at 133. I thought the run on the CFO stakes there was outstanding and op and represents very good value here. So Funny, when he, we asked him what he'd do with the million, he started off by saying, look, I'll pay some debts and I'll invest and whatnot. But well, you can watch it for free nowadays on the Tab app, of course. Let's have a look at what's happening for you on track for the Forks play. Some of air, the Philly Elise is third last, but trying to improve from the tour and perfect rhyme as the last one. Spanish Reef leads at the 500 metres from Daisy Doom at Aid Memoir. Then Prompt Response. Silence Edition tucked away between them. Further back to Dixie Blossoms. Eckstein and Abby Marie heads the rest. Into the straight. Spanish Reef comes off the fence. Prompt Response goes through. Running on now is Silence Edition on the outside of Daisy Doom. Then Dixie Blossoms. Oregon's Day and Eckstein up the fence. Prompt Response takes the lead. 150 out. Here's Elise coming down the outside. Elise going after Prompt Response and and Elise 
Elise, the filly goes on to win, and Elise beats prompt response. Heavens above grab third. The outside of Daisy Doom, then Dixie Blossoms, Oregon's Day, and next line up the fence. Prompt response takes the lead, 150 out. Here's Elise coming down the outside. Elise going after prompt response, and Elise the filly goes on to win, and Elise beats prompt response. Heavens above grab third in front of Oregon's Day and Abby Marie, then Dixie Blossoms quickly. Elise back into the winners list with a group one and that customary turn of foot was back again today at a mile back from 2000 it just goes so well for Glenn he gets back on her he presents her and she has got a lethal sprint and she put him away winning by a big margin from the very very bright um, she's had the couple of runs at the Ramwick mile now for a flight stakes win and here she is you know beating the older mares in the Coolmore uh, the Coolmore legacy. Uh, wow, the, the, the sky's the limit for a, a, a filly like her. What could she do? Could she win an Epsom? Could she win a, a Maya Classic? Mm. Yes. Why couldn't she? Uh, a total domination over some very... Bottle was first up and uh, she won a group two there, but um, no, I, I, I think she's uh, one of the best fillies in the country. Her brother, Astern, was one of the best best, best colts when he was racing at three and uh, we've got a brazen bow little brother coming through the stables who we're excited about. Happy to just go around and based on this level of uh, Competition. There goes Winx. We've, I think you've said enough, haven't you, Duff and Lizzie? Yeah, I think she she can do the talking from now on. Yeah, I think we'll leave it all up to her. And a real roughy consensus for Steve McKean, Jason. Uh, 9142 our numbers, so uh, I wouldn't say he's an arch roll. 914 and 3. Well, there she is. Can she make it 25 wins in a row today in the Queen Elizabeth? Can't remember the last time she was this price. $1.22. Now... The Long Jeans, Quint Elizabeth Stakes, and they're off and racing. And a good line out, Galo Shop in particular, with classic uniform and consensus showing speed. Winks is back last in the early stage. Now starting a bit of a run here as Williams on Ambitious. He's making the move a fair way out, and he sends the stallion Ford Ambitious around the outside of the field. Then coming through, success days, Humidor shuffle back a bit. Happy Clapper and Winks, they're both back last as they go to the 600 metre mark. Galo shop leads narrowly from classic uniform the outside and ambitious striding up on the outside they're followed just behind them then to Odeon from success days coming through consensus wings getting to the outside humidor the inside of her happy clapper needs luck as they straighten up galo shop tries to kick three lengths clear but wings is getting into her work and they're broken clear from the rest galo shop in front but wings moves up on the outside wings takes the lead from galo shop and here's her second Queen Elizabeth. This is a silver jubilee moment on the throne for 25 consecutive wins to equal the record of the great black caviar. Wins it easily. Galo Shop held second. Happy clap. Galo Shop tries to kick. Three lengths clear. But Winks is getting into her work. And they're broken clear from the rest. Galo Shop in front. But Winks moves up on the outside. Winks takes the lead from Galo Shop. And here's her second Queen Elizabeth. This is a silver jubilee moment on the throne for 25 consecutive wins to equal the record of the great black caviar. Wins it easily. Galo Shop held second. Happy Clapper third. Humidor got going late for fourth. Then came coming through. Good gap back to consensus from Odeon. Classic uniform. Ambitious couldn't sustain the runner and success days last. They stand together for a moment in time. 25 each. Joins Black Caviar just for a moment, Duff. They're together in the history books. Wow, what a moment! A few people very nervous about her today, uh, but what will we? A dozen or more lengths from the thousand, but she's just an exceptional athlete, and she creates so much attention. And oh, I'm just so elated. I'm so proud of her. So straight. Every bit of raw Ramwick is going to soak this in. They're standing here and they're applauding a champion. 
she could go around again, Duff. Oh, isn't that just great? Just hearing the, the reaction she gets from a crowd. I just love that. I'm doing a Chris Waller now. Mate, you've held it together for 25 starts or 24. You're this allowed is, to go this one is, day. This is just the best. This is really? the best feeling. The best horse in the world. Ridden by the best jockey in the world. Trained by the best trainer in the world. We just can't get it any better than that for racing. Why is today special? Yeah. So, she has to be pretty special to win the way she does. And she just won with a bit of arrogance again. She just keeps lifting to those big occasions. What were you thinking today? Humidor and has beaten them easily, running away. Um, she's just a star. She's the best there is at the moment. I'd be staggered if there's a horse in the world that could beat her. And um, just another outstanding chapter in her book. Yeah, surely they've got. Even though she, you know, she matched that magic 25 yesterday with Black Caviar, but. Just the moment and, and how lucky we are to have two champions so close together in our lifetime, mm. it, it, it's, it's just amazing. Back to back, Chelly. How many times you watched that last night? <laughs> Only the ones. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the ending a few times, but um, to watch her again from the beginning is pretty exciting. Even now, oh. Sunday morning, <laughs> it, it, it affects you like that. Yeah, it does. Really? The, the Queen Elizabeth. That that's that's her. That's that's her champion quality, and the way that she can pull a sectional out in a staying race of the, our best sprinter. You know, like she can run the. A, that weight, so uh, I think he run well, but couldn't back him. Super cash spot. I think he's at the best each way, but in the race. And Miss Rock is another one that maps perfectly. So uh, bullish about Voodoo Lab, but which one? I'm going to from the yard. There's three gallopers by Lope de Vega. I think Santa Anna Lane is the best looker here, just in front of her at Voodoo Lab. Certainly presented well. Second up, and I think uh, well, second up in Adelaide would take a. They're racing in the Dali Goodwood and out wide Stella Collision began well with Secret Agenda. Vega Magic was away cleanly, going quickly at Stablemate, throwing them in search of the front. Flamber Secret Agenda was back there with it. Then Vidora, she's well back with Nipperkin. Vera Dean, Santa Anna Lane. Then Handsome Thief, Lope de Capio. And Exalted Adam was last up to the turn in the Dali Goodwood. And on the inside, throwing them joined by Flamberge and Deeper Vega Magic. Right behind them, Miss Rock with Super Cash. Ferrando back on the inside, uh, then over Cher and right to the outside goes Secret Agenda with Nipperkin, Flamberge led, Vega Magic after it, Super Cash squeezing between them, then over Cher, I'll have a bit running on with Still Frost, Vega Magic, Flamberge, Miss Rock was still there, Super Cash trying to squeeze through, Flamberge led, here's Santa Anna Lane, Santa Anna Lane through on the inside, Santa Anna Lane wins the Dali Goodwin, beats Miss Rock second for the second consecutive year, I'll have a bit was third, super cash. Uh, then over Cher and right to the outside goes Secret Agenda with Nipperkin, Flamberge led, Vega Magic after it, super cash squeezing between them. Then over Cher, I'll have a bit running on with Still Frost, Vega Magic, Flamberge, Miss Rock was still there, super cash trying to squeeze through, Flamberge led, here's Santa Anna Lane, Santa Anna Lane through on the inside, Santa Anna Lane wins the Dali Goodwin, beats Miss Rock second for the second consecutive year. I'll have a bit was third. Super cash, not sure how much luck it had. Flip. Gee, what a result. Ben Mellon, he's had a bit of luck in this race in the past. He sure has. And Santa Anna Lane, the pick from the yard for Adam McGrath, has come with a steaming run to win the Goodwood, hasn't he? He uh, even picked his way through the field. What a, what a good season Anthony Friedman's having uh, with his horses. She had shoals there last week winning the, uh, the big group one. And this horse is... Uh, he's been a horse that's always had showed bits and pieces of brilliance, but you just got to time his preparation to the minute. And they certainly got that right yesterday. Miss Rock was much better uh, ridden. Two, two, nine and four. They are moving out for the Group 1 Kingsford Smith Cup. And they're out on the track there and uh, arriving at the start point. We're going to try and squeeze in Sandown as we take you to Matt. Fifth out, three wide, creeping forward now. Her Zandler's drama, a length and a half to Champagne. Cuddles out three wide. Might have some cover with impending between it and Volpe Veloce over on the inside. And Care to Think is still last of all. Really tight and compact here. There's only five lengths first to last. Monsieur Gustave on the outside in company here with also Le Remain. Out three wide, looming up now is Endless 
first drama. Champagne cuddles one from the outside. English is back nearer the inside and care to think right down the outside from impending. Lur remains in front. Champagne cuddles on the outside from impending and care to think. Lur remains in front. Impending coming through late. Champagne cuddles on the outside. Lur remain impending. They go to the line. It's a photo. Lur remain impending. Third champagne cuddles, I reckon, just ahead of English. Followed by Volpe Veloce. Care to think. Time impending. He's done. A finish. What a finish to the Kingsford Smith Cup. And here is impending, grabbing Le Remain. And it's impending. He's won a Stradbroke. And he's won another Group 1 in Queensland, the Kingsford Smith Cup. He's impending. Does he go out on a high? Is that it for him? Is he off the stud? Oh, he was used. He's like, I'd, I'd probably think so now. He probably outweighed it in the Stradbroke. But uh, class, class, class. And not only class from the... One egg tart number seven, Chris Waller, Leith Innes. Yeah, well, Glennie No Shoes is threatening to play beat the bookie with this all morning. It'll be interesting to see if he, he goes. Put her at the top of the list going on that last performance. 7 2 3 4. Gallic. Ch uh -huh. Caravelli over on the inside. Egg Tart is out three wide. She's still got probably seven lengths to make up. She's past tradesman. Man of his words, second last. Gallic Chieftain now last at the 400. On the inside, Mega Blast just in front. From on the outside, smart as you think. Egg Tart is going to third. She's running on strongly. They're clear there. From on the outside, Tradesman. It's Mega Blast, smart as you think. Claimed now by Egg Tart and shortly afterward, the race favourite Egg Tart has burst clear. Two lengths in front from Mega Blast. On the outside, Tradesman. Smart as you think, but it's all Egg Tart. And Egg Tart is going to win by three lengths on the line. It's a photo second between Mega Blast and Tradesman, followed by Smart as you think, Gallic Chief. All right, it must be Christmas. You keep taking them on, we'll keep backing them, Munzee. Egg Tart won as easy as you like. It's 12 months all... The Group 1s, all of them, the Doncasters, the Doombin Cups, um, and, and this was just this was just her race to lose, but she was never going to lose it. Uh, she found her preferred going. Uh, she, she found uh, hardly... ...back to eight. Santa Ana Lane, the Goodwood winner, is $11 into $10. Uh, Shillelagh is $13 out to $14. Russell Select is the top pick on the fixed at $4.80, $6 impending and Paras is next in line at $8. Last speed and Fox Plaza's last of all impending is back on the ruck. He's about eight at the 4.25. On the inside, Paras just in front. Reynolds drama. Super Cash going to third. Champagne Cuddles looking for the way clear. Santa and Elaine is over on the inside and crack me up down the outside. Paras, Endless drama. Champagne Cuddles. The inside, Santa and Elaine coming through. Santa and and Elaine's hit the front from Paras Champagne Cuddle Super Cash Crack Me Up. Santa and Elaine for the Stradbroke. Santa and Elaine by two lengths. Super Cash second, photo third. Champagne Cuddle's prominent. Paras and Crack Me Up up there, followed by Shillelagh. Impending. Santa and Elaine is the 2018 You Bet Stradbroke ha Handicap Champion and wins it comfortably by two lengths on the line. Exactly what he did in the, in the Goodwood Handicap. So, uh, a Horse in fine, fine form, putting two. Well, that's his third career group one. So he's really come of age, this Fredda. Super, super. And we're just chat Sam here with me, and we're just chatting away. The first horse to complete the Goodwood Stradbroke Double in history. Yeah. No, look. Um... Second of our group ones is next. Three and a half minutes away from the JJ Adkins Plate over the mile for the two-year-olds, and on track. The Autumn Sun is going for a bit of a drift, as Quinny suggested. It was easier. Wides with us some cover just in behind those sizzling ace over on the inside from Plumaro. The Autumn Sun, Miss Sarah, followed there by just in behind those Pepe La Few, Lee Me Machine, Caesar second last, and homemade two and a half lengths away at the 350 in front. Boom Sarah, two and a half lengths clear. Grim Reaper on the inside coming quickly, going into second. Uh, also, Zusain down the outside. The Autumn Sun down the outside as well. And also, Fundamentalist coming through. Fundamentalist Zusain. The Autumn Sun, the Autumn Sun and Zusain. Zusain the inside, the Autumn Sun. The Autumn Sun stretches and wins. The Autumn Sun ahead to Zusain. Photo third, Fundamentalist and Caesar, followed by Grim Reaper, Plumaro. Next well, what have we unearthed here?
unbeaten. Three starts, three wins, and at its third start, the Autumn Sun gets a Group 1 on the board, beats Zusain. Wet track. Um, he gets to a mile, um, but still puts them away, and, and puts them away with, with style. He just looks a horse that's uh, all quality, wait for age class in time. There's no doubt about it. The leader. Yeah. Mm. So he didn't cross. Yeah. But anyway, and bar barriers were important. Nature strip yesterday. Didn't this horse bounce back? He's always been uh, an X factor horse, and you know we're, we're we're still waiting for him to tick off that 1200 metre box. But this is a, this is a pretty good win. Look, this track was in the in the soft range yesterday. It's an 1100 metre race, obviously down the straight. He travelled. He pricked his ears. He, he he cruised in the run, and look at him sprint home here. He's point one point one one outside the course record at Flemington on a, on a winter track. Um, you've got to stand up and take notice of this horse. He's, a, um, he's always had that big boom on him and obviously we're just waiting him. If he, if he wins a 1200 metre race, um, I must say he'd have to be, he'd have to get a slot. He'd have to get a slot. Someone, someone will like that horse.